Alright, uh, thank you very much, my people. I appreciate you all. Let me quickly uh, start accepting my people in. Oga Felix, I don't see you already. You can turn off your camera, please. Thank you. Um, I have uh, more people right there with us. You know, let me see. I've seen Mother Patricia Tagojumi, Mother Busy Braze. I don't see you. And I don't see um, how many my people. Let me just be bringing everybody in the way it is, you know. I don't I don't see you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. You know, you can come in now. Uh, Miss, uh, Mr. Prince Akwashi, I don't see you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for joining us. God bless every one of you. All right. I, I want us to quickly take this together. Jude King. Uh, let me see who is behind Jude King. Okay, Jude King, you're joining us right now. Okay, Jude King, please tell us where you're joining us from. Uh, is it your first time on the panel? Jude King, we can't hear you. Yes, it's Hello? my first time. Oh, it's your first time. Thank you, please. Where did you join us from? I'm going to hear you. you. Okay, for Europe, your network is very slow. Anyway, I'll come back to you. We still have a couple of things to present right now. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. You know, um, Abdul, Malik, your, you need to turn on your device, especially your mic. You know, I cannot accept you in because, and I notice you're always uh, facing this uh, issue right here. You know, turn on your mic so that we can accept you in. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, before I start taking an article, I want us to listen to just one minute of this video right here, quickly. Femi Fane Kayode, a spokesperson of the Presidential Campaign Committee of Bola Meditinubu, has suddenly turned around to attack who but Bola Meditinubu himself. Wonders, they say, will never end. You know that Femi Fane Kayode, they used to call him a stomach politician. He is interested in what comes out of politics. And of course, he is not going to be happy that he's not one of those nom nominated for ministerial position after suffering so much to defend everything about Bola Ahmed Tinubu, including the indefensible. What has gone wrong? Why did he rise up to attack Bola Ahmed Tinubu? We are going to tell you what happened. It is all to do with the imbroglio that is happening right now in our neighboring country called Niger Republic. Let me put it in perspective. One this thing happened and Bola Ahmed Tinubu said that ECOWAS is going to invade Niger impose sanctions and the rest of it. Femi Fanika Yede was one of the persons that came out smoking with caustic language, saying that Nigeria will smash, march down, destroy, eliminate Niger Republic and the Burkina Faso, including Mali, if they dare challenge the authority of Nigerian military and the ECOWAS. And it was typical. Everybody knew that that's the line that um, Femi Fanikayode will tow because he's a, a Tinubu adherent. And then suddenly something happened and he turned full cycle to attack Bola Ahmed Tinubu. He said that um, in the beginning that he was talking about Niger Republic, Burkina Faso, Mali, and any other country that attacks Nigeria or violates our territorial integrity or attempts to take one inch of our nation, that we must fight them to the last man. And I'm asking, did Niger say that we, they were going to invade Nigeria? Did Mali or Burkina Faso say that they are going to invade Nigeria? They didn't say that. 
so he must have been misinformed and he said that he stands by his word but now watch where he turned full time he said that a word of caution to the dogs of war and who are the dogs of war who are those who are proposing to go to fight niger and to return this man that was removed from power mohammed uh, badum or whatever he is called so femi fani kayode said that it would be imprudent and unwise for nigeria to attempt to clean up france mess in niger republic so he said the french are okay thank you very much my people i would like to take this by myself right here Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Press on the like button, help us to share, press on the dollar sign, the courage what we are doing here. Yes, uh, my brother, Mr. Alex, it's good to have you here. I don't see you already. You know, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my wonderful people right there. Um, yes, let me quickly take on this. I'll come back to you guys. This is the last part. But meanwhile, before I would take that. Okay, yes, let me just take this first before reactions. Okay, Fanny Coyote. Now, so in the right arm, as I see, I'm right there. That's him. Fanica, he put all the pictures right there. Let me remove this here. You can see them. That was how he started. Then he went on with this. One moment, my people. I'm just trying to take all this off so I can see it properly. He started by saying that ECOWAS versus, uh, versus Niger. Who is fooling who? We work hard took many bullets and took great risk to put this government in place. I've been on office. I would like we can take that paragraph again because this, this particular paragraph why they read that today is sweet me. Eh? It's ECOWAS versus Niger. Who is fully who? We worked hard, took many bullets, took great risk to put this government in place. And we are and and we not only have a big stake in it, but we must also ensure that it succeeds. Okay. Apart from our unloud loyalty and unflinching support and our commitment to assist him in watering every storm and stumbling the country, there is only one thing we own the president, and that is to always tell him the plain truth. Today, that truth is that the pending attack on Niger Republic is unpopular at home and if unleashed would be a momental error. If ECOWAS must go into Niger in the name of wanting to restore constitutional order, so be it. But let them do so without any Nigerian troops. <laughs> But before that, before I will continue with that statement one at the year, so this one of Anika Yodi, this this was just last week here. He said we will crush you like maggot under our feet. Fanika Yodi won Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger Army. This one was on the first of August, just last week ago here, a week plus ago. Right, so what went wrong? What's happening today? Uh, is now attacking at this particular one. I, I believe I, I read them that day for you. So he was supporting Tinobu and he threatened Niger, saying Niger is too small, regardless of the situation that we are facing in Nigeria. Uh, we are still not mates, we can crush them anyhow, and blah blah blah. It is sorted the hell out of them just about a week plus ago. Then today, like the one that first, uh article that I read, then I'll move on to put it one right there as well. It went on. Let the French and their Franco-phone allies in our sub-region with American intelligence and logist, uh, log uh, logistical support do the job on their own and leave us out of it. It is only if our nation is attacked or our sovereignty violated that we should get into the fray. Outside of that, and until then, we should use only diplomatic means to settle the issue and not allow ourselves to be drawn into an unnecessary and bloody regional war, the end of which no one knows. 
to the Ivory Coast President Ahasan Otara, who has said that this is not a Nigeria versus Niger conflict, but rather an ECOWAS versus Niger one. I respectfully ask the following questions. Who will contribute 90% of the troops and foot um, almost all the bills of this force? Is it not Nigeria? Question. Whose military hardware and asset will be deployed, mobilized, utilized more than any other? Is it not Nigeria? Is asking. Then he continue. Whose shares are northern border with Niger and whose northern civilian population are bound to suffer the most hardship, the greatest degree of collateral damage, the high, highest number of casualties and accommodate the highest number of displaced people and refugees? Is it not Nigeria? We have trod this path before and we know where it ends. We cannot be fooled again. If any force is deployed and Nigeria opts to participate, we will pay more than all the other ECOWAS nations put together in the loss of civilians, military lives, and in the blood and treasure. Hmm. Apart from that, the ECOWAS force and their military capability is nothing without Nigerian troop. To say that this would be an ECOWAS versus Niger war as opposed to the facto Nigeria versus Niger one misleading and disingenuous. Okay, we move on. Such a war would be fought, prosecuted, and won by preliminary Nigeria, uh, Nigerian force, even though there may be a sprinkling of a few others just for show and for the record. All the sophistry, propaganda, and delusion in the world cannot change that. If and when the whole thing goes down and we get involved militarily, militarily you can bet your bottom dollars that it won't just be a Nigeria versus Niger war, but it will also end up being a Nigeria versus Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Wagner one. Was still involvement in such a military conflict may tear our country apart along ethnic, re, uh, religion, um, regional, and religious lines. This must be avoided at all costs. To add to this, complex means the wife of General Abdurrahman Tiani, the head of the military junta in Niger, is actually a Nigerian from Kangewa in Kebi state, while his Emmy, the Emmy of Donso is Niger, owns allegiance and pays homage to the Emmy of Agugu in Nigeria. Okay, I don't know what he's talking about there, but let's move on. I guess many of you know all those chief and names. That is how connected our, our two countries are. The truth is that there is hardly any family in the core north that does not have relatives from and in Niger. Can they be expected to sit by idly and applaud us why we kill their brothers and sisters across the border for no just cause, even when our nation has not been attacked and our territory integrity, integrity has not been violated? Metings, not. Okay. As I wrote as well, outside of any diplomatic initiatives, let the French clean up their own self-inflicted mess and fight for their hedge monies and parasitic, parasitic neo-colonial interest and uranium supplies in Niger and let us stay out of our bilingual neighbors' internal affairs. Okay, that was this guy trying now to be a good person, you know, uh, FFK, trying to be the best. But just less than two weeks ago, that was him as well. He threatened them. Internet doesn't lie. That's why whatever we say on air, you must listen to yourself because it, it, might, it might or certainly be used against you tomorrow.
All right, that was it. Then it came back again. But meanwhile, before I bring that in, um, although I, I'm not going to present this one on air, but let me see if I can quickly bring it, um, read it from here because I didn't was I was not uh, able to upload it to the software. Hold on, guys. Let me. Okay, I think I'm going to get it right now. Okay, it came back. It now said, on a final note. Permit me to share the following exchange. On hearing of my stiff opposition to the deploying our troops into Niger by dear friends Umaru Farouk, offered the following rationaliz rationalization to me. He wrote, the decision to place the troops on standby force is to force the junta to comply with the charter of demand from the regional and other international institutions via diplomatic channel, also to actionably deploy the troops in case of any further coke attempt anywhere in the territory of ECOWAS. My response to him was as follows. Unquote, Naim the talk so. You and I know that this threat of the use of force will not work and that will not result in their stepping down. It will rather harden their hearts and eventually lead to a military conflict. You do not place your armed force on alert unless you intend to deploy. It is only a question of time. Me think that it is a very bad step. It is ill-timed and it is ill-advised. It is bad for our country, bad for our people, and bad for the government. Finally, as regards your suggestion that the force can be used and deployed in case of any future cope anywhere in ECOWAS. I ask, why should Nigeria be the policeman of the West African sub-region? Why should we be used to protect after times, corrupt, dictatorial, and illegitimate civilian? If we all say illegitimate uh, president now, ah, say illegitimate civilian, sit tight, ruler, and puppet regimes in other parts of West Africa. Then he continued. Out of all the leaders in the 15 countries that make up the ECOWAS subregion, I can only vouch for the legitimacy, integrity, and democratic credentials of the president of Nigeria, Ghana, Benin, Senegal, Sierra Leone, and Liberia. Now, they talk so funny, kind of day. I cannot vouch for any of other, and I have little respect for them. In any case, don't we have enough problems of our own. Can you imagine? Now, Fanika, did they talk like this? So, after just uh, last week, uh, submission from him, let others deal with their internal issues and let us deal with ours. Nigerian blood must never be split or shed for the sake of some of these frano phone rollers who have sold their souls to the devil and their people to France and who have been turned into errant boys, groveling slaves by their former colonial masters. For example, is it President Paul Bia of the Cameroon who has been in power in that country for the past, for the last 41 years that our soldiers should protect and die for? Hmm. Is it President Fore Eyadema of Togo who is in classic Northern Korean style, is operating and nurturing a system of dynastic rule in his nation and who, between him and his late father, Nasibe Eyema, have ruled their country for the past 61 years? Is that all Nigeria should die for? Is it the president of Asin Otara of La uh, Côte d'Ivoire who is prepared to do anything for the French who suppresses and persecutes his opponent and who had his predecessor in office, President Laurent Babo, bordered off to the international court at the Hague at the behest of their former colonial master simply because he dared to question the legitimacy and sought to break the yoke of French domination and bondage and restore the self-respect 
and dignity of his people by coming up with the noble and patriotic concept of Ivory, mini Ivorians first. Okay, I continue. If anyone really want to know what the French do, their Francophone subject through this auspice of the pliant and severe local democratically elected African leaders, they should listen to the explosive and utterly outstanding speech delivered just over a year ago by the beautiful, passionate, and fair Italian Prime Minister, Giorgia Meloni, who lambasted President Emmanuel uh, Macron, is it Macron or Ma Macron? Sorry, Macron of France, and persecuting and cruelly exploiting the people of Africa. Are these the sort of leaders we should protect or vouch for? And we supposed to send our soldiers to die in order to perpetuate French hegemony in the nations? Surely not. Unless our country is attacked, I do not see any sense in using our military for any outside our shores other than for the peacekeeping. May God open our eyes and guide our leaders before it's too late. FFK. I so you to write that one. But meanwhile, does it mean say God can open the eye before? Because it was just less than two weeks ago. What you're reading on air, uh, on the screen right now, now you write that one. Now you be that. Now you talk that one for you. You see the in, in, in Twitter space uh, handle, you never delete them. But meanwhile, people have responded though. I would like us to see what people have to say uh, here. Some people responded to to this. I, I'm not sure if I if I put it here. But meanwhile, the previous video I played earlier on for the other man was saying that judges cannot deliver their judgment based on emotion for people on social media and all that. So people responded to that. So according to this, said the judges should have themselves from internal courses. All eyes on judiciary. The Nigerian constitution is written in English and is very clear. Okay, we have another one that in my country, Nigeria, it is easy to manifest the eighth wonder of the world. The judges live and work in Nigeria. They know how poorly INEC performed. The enough evidence have been provided. It is now left for the judiciary to save Nigeria. Then I have another person here saying that this lawman, that's the second man on that video that I asked earlier on, make I listen to, and I need to talk to for years. This lawman holding brief for the judges. Where was he? Where was where was he when several cases of apparent injustice were delivered by the same judges? Instances are hope Uzodima cases, which subsequently end him the subsequent Supreme Court governor and Lawan case. To mention just these two, the Nigeria judiciary is famous for standing justice on its head. So people's concern about the way their judgment will go in this petition is quite justified. Exactly, because we have never trusted them. So we have another reaction there. Yes, the court is burdened by the INEC not doing their job, but the pressure on the judiciary is based on recent judgment given by the judges who seemingly favoring those in power, La one case, <laughs> two people don't talk about La one. In mind, in addition to the close ties between Tinubu and the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, Ariwala Olukayode, while uh, I have another person here, in other words, he's saying that when Tinubu wins the case, no one should say it was bias. That is that it was the evidence that led to it. <laughs> LOL. Yes, that's what that second satanic man was saying. That's why I said you guys should pay attention to him earlier on. While another person is here saying that how I wish I can have a link to send my message across the tribunal direct. Yes, they are not expected to deliver judgment based on views of the people's sentiment or bias, but by the set down consideration for the posterity and not to set Nigeria on fire and destroy the entity. 
Okay, I have another one here. The judiciary should stand by the, by the Nigerian constitution and uphold it. They should not favor any candidate, but we the people aren't blind. Evidence before the court is plenty and clear for all to see. All eyes on the judiciary. While I have another one here, this is quite long. The verdict to come from the judges must have to favor the commonest of all men, women, and children must be handled down through the law, evidence, and the constitution. What INEC failed to do, the justices of the tribunal will soon do for the public, for the for Tinubu said after his fallacious victory given by INEC. Unquote. I know millions of you did not vote for me and you did not expect to stand here before you for you were expecting your candidates. Yes, now I quote with that. I saw Tinubu talk him and I, I watch him and the video is on social media. With legal reasoning, the evidence is with Peter Obi. The judicial may be on trial here yeah, based on the matters before the court. But the truth must have to stand. Why the last one here is saying that delay in delivering judgment could only mean one thing. Peter will be won the case. All right. So um, I have one or two response as well. Let me quickly put this. I think that was for the for uh, Fanny Kayode. That response. Let me quickly put this um, on my software. One minute, guys. We are almost there. Please bear with me. I remember I forwarded it here if I if, if I was still see and though. Uh, let's see if it's this one. I'm not too sure, but let's just see. One moment, let's see. If I don't see, I will just move on. No worry. I guess it's this one. This one coming. Yeah, yeah nine. Okay, this person say I agree with everything you said here, except that you mentioned Tinubu as one of the legitimate president at FFK. You lost a lot of respect and followers. The moment you started speaking from the two sides of your mouth, how come you don't care about your integrity anymore? If I care about integrity, I don't understand that person. The question where they ask him, he say anymore. Eh? He cared before. I believe I have another one here, but I don't know if I can get it. But let me see if it's this one. Let me take another call again. Uh, because I know it's two. Let's see. Okay, I believe so. You, this man, posted a bad word some days ago. You even told Niger to go and verify the strength of our military. Today, you are already checking because that thing you called for has happened. Listen, we must go to Niger and fight this war. You all, imbecile, called for it and you must have it. So now, so that person talk him. So that is all we have for you for this particular um response from Fanny Kayade. Meanwhile, I would like to quickly divert a little bit to this woman here. You guys remember this woman that found $70,000 uh, somewhere and returned it back. So Davido gifted her $10,000 and many people have been gifting her money ever since. But she has been granted a permanent uh, stay resident of Canada to move to Canada with immediate velocity. So my people, good pays. I talked about this woman a couple of days ago. Uh, here, I was referencing to her, you know, if people can learn from her, doing the right thing, you don't have anything to lose. I've said that so many times, you know. Many people who is listening to me right now or many people in Nigeria, we find $70,000, they, they will take her wrong. They will just say, ah, God, don't bless me when I pray. Why they pray? God cannot bless you with other people's sweats except they gave it to you by themselves. We should stop giving thanks to God or rushing to church to, to go give a uh, thanksgiving. Uh, yahoo, yahoo, boys, go wrong, go church, go give thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for what? Go, they thank God. Thank you, God, for listening to me. And their mother will follow them there. God, thank you, say my picky can't remove me from suffering. Your picky remove you from suffering by causing other people's pains? No, it, don't, it, it doesn't work like that. And it shouldn't work like that. So I thought I should bring this here that the blessing is still flowing uh, around this woman as we speak. 
But meanwhile, let me bring this article here quickly. I know some people, they backstage, just hold on. You know, this is the last article. Uh, you remember, uh, I think I talked about this uh, woman on yesterday morning broadcast, you know. So I would like to quickly put this on the screen right now. One moment. Odili Joy Odili, Nabi Lassi Nabi, her name, you know, um, she was caught, you know, allegedly how she was planning to work for Tinubu to make sure that the judgment go in favor of Bola Ahmed Tinubu. So Justice Odili, I have nothing to do with tribunal judgments. So she have responded, you know, based on the circulation and the information about her, you know, I, I, in fact, the allegations as well, you know, on every social media uh, platforms. But she was forced to respond. If a former justice of Supreme Court, Mary Peter Odili, yesterday refuted the allegation that she had begun meeting with judges, handling cases at the presidential election petition tribunal, PEPT, in order to influence them in favor of President Bola Tinubu. An online publisher, Jackson Ude, had alleged that Justice Peter Odili uh, is currently negotiating a pathway for President Bola Tinubu. He also alleged that she meets regularly with appeal and Supreme Court in that regard. Hmm. Okay, let's move on. But in a statement yesterday, Justice Mary Peter Odili re refuted the allegations. She described them as false, malicious, mischievous, and a deliberate attempt to smearing her integrity and solid reputation. <laughs> solid reputation. Okay, in the statement by our media assistant, Felix Enebeli, the retired Supreme Court Justice said she had also referred the matter to a lawyer as well as the police and other security agencies for appropriate action for those people who lie against her. While the statement urged the public to disregard the ignore uh, and ignore the false publication, it added that it has the potential of inciting the public against her lordship on an issue of grave national importance. It noted that the that our lordship is neither a judicial consultant to anyone, nor she's in any way connected with or involved in any of the presidential election petitions or in any other election petition whatsoever. So now so she talk um, then unquote our attention has been drawn to a publication circulating in the social media against the person of retired Justice Mary Okago Peter Odili, wherein in the author one Jackson Ode falsely and maliciously alleged inter alley that the revered jurist currently negotiating a pathway for Bola Tenable and that she meets regularly with appeal and Supreme Court in that regard. Advertisement, okay. Why the defamation arising from the false allegation has been referred to the lawyers of our lordship to deal with in accordance with the law, we consider it appropriate, particularly for the sake of the public, to issue uh, this unequivocal denial of the false allegation. We deny every allegation contained in the publication and state that it is false, malicious, mischievous, and a deliberate attempt at smearing the integrity and solid reputation of our lordship. We say nothing of, the, of that fact. The publication has the potential of inciting the public against her lordship on our issue of grave national importance. Okay, now so, okay, I believe, okay, I'll just stop it right there. Uh, they continue though, but let's stop it right there. So now the woman be the one I say her face, so in case she's guilty, but she says she not talk, but you go more, they know them, more they see their face and all that. And uh, why anybody go stand me, Nigeria, not better, I don't know. But let's move on. 
as we see and for paper and so they carry and come here thank you very much my people everybody right there appreciate you all for your time with us we have over a thousand people watching us i will appreciate if you guys can press on the like because currently the like is not encouraging we only have 200 and something likes why we have over a thousand people watching us it's not encouraging at all if you can hear me press on the like button we have 278 is too too poor it's very very poor to be honest you know press on the like button my people i thought as i did read since you know when they help me they press the like button but sometimes you know when i want to ask so with the ask now i better make a press them god bless you all meanwhile help us to share as well subscribe with us if you are listening to us hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we are here and also press on the dollar sign support what we are doing here you know uh buy us a coffee and God, I go bless you, my people. I would like us to start talking right now. I'm going to, yes, I'll post the link again. I know. Uh, even some people that was on the panel, some of them left. Uh, Mr. Alex, you were here, you know, you know where to be found now. And uh, who again, many people left during that time, but I'll post out the link again. But meanwhile, I'd like us to quickly move on now to hear from, let me take this off screen. To hear from the people that we already have here before I post out the link. Uh, thank you very much, my people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to every one of you. Prince Akwashi, uh, uh, okay. Before you, Prince Akwashi, I'll come back to you. Let me uh, prioritize somebody that joined us from Nigeria, Abuja. Enterprise, are you there with us? Good evening to you, sir. It's good to have you on the panel. I'd like you to talk to us first. Good evening, my brother. I'm here with you. May God bless you. And uh, may God bless everyone in planning. Want me to go ahead? Yes, yes. Give us your submission. Okay. Yes. Okay. Right. Very good. Okay. Very good. Uh, I I would like to talk to my brothers in the north. You see, he, my brothers in the north. It's now you people are crying. Why are you people crying? Why you you decided to cast your vote for Chinubu? You people are getting offended now. You are looking Chinubu as an enemy now. But you people are the causes of everything now. You give him your vote, and if people are happy giving you your vote, what I see that time, you people don't see it. Today now, he's going to Niger. You will feel that Tinbu was offended you. What's, why must anything that you touch us is that time will now come out to talk? Why, why, can't, why can't you talk from Nigeria? We are all Nigerians. Why can't you talk from Nigeria? Is when it's something gets to affect us, we, we decided to talk out. The time you, uh, you, you people are campaigning for children, I was, I was telling people, you are campaigning for, uh, for children going around, call your be all kinds of sins. You call your be Christian, you call your be a liar, you call your be IPOP, you call your be every kind of sins that is pretending. Opi cannot do it as he's pretending. But you feel that Tinubu is the one that will do it. It gets a, a time that you people say this. I want to remember you, my brothers. It gets a time you people said it. A bad Muslim is better than a good Christian. Yo, you people have seen a bad Muslim now. You say it's better than a good Christian. You are facing it today. You are complaining. Why are you complaining, please? We should walk up. You people vote for this man. You people cast your vote for this man. And you condemn me, be. Let me say it to uh, my brothers and sisters, my mothers and my fathers in the north. We have to know it is time now we have to understand that. We have to work for Nigeria. We are looking for the best for Nigeria. If we should not bring in religion every time what people are doing, you are bringing religion into me. Religion cannot take away, cannot take us to anywhere. You do, religion is based on yourself and your God. Serve your God and let other ones serve his God. Whatever you do is concerned him with God. Whatever you ever you do, you concern him with your God. So we should not bring religion into everything we are doing. So if you, if you, if you condone your will be today. But you are seeing Tinubu today. You are regretting now. My brothers and sisters, you have to open eyes. 
Don't let anybody be brain, brainwashing people every time. We have to understand that we have Nigeria, we have all of us habits. We have to look for the best to do it for us. We, you people support an ex-chairman to rig election. You will support it. Some a worse Muslim is better than a good Christian. You will support an ex. Why are you people regret it today? We cast our vote, our vote was not count. You give people you give votes to Tilimbu. You record the anarchy, 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 anarchy don't, they don't follow the election with it. He, he writes the election himself. He writes the result to himself. And now Tilimbu as a chair, as a president of Nigeria. Today, all of you are complaining. All of you are mourning now. You are regretting for your vote. You use your hand to vote for someone and you are regretting. May you not vote for anybody and regret voting for the person. You should understand it. Open your eyes. One of some complaining people don't understand. Now, Obi is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a candidate in Nigeria need. And Nigeria they cut their vote for Obi. And the vote was not counted. And a clear show. I'm saying it now. Whether we like, whether we don't like, we'll face it together. We'll face it together, we'll suffer it together. And nobody should complain. They come out in Kanu today, they were doing rally. That's one thing, like that. You push should be it. So, Obi is the candidate of our choice in the, in the country who fought for him. I'm begging the judiciary in the name of God. The judiciary, please and please give vo vote, give, announce or be as a winner. Please, you are Nigeria. You see what's going on from uh, that very the day we vote. You see what is going, what going on in Nigeria. We decided to cut our vote will be, and every one of you, judiciary, your eye is not blind. You are seeing what is going on in, in this country. You know we cut our vote will be, we vote will be. And the be have proved it in, in the court already. Please announce will be. No less than that, nothing less than that. Announce will be as a winner. I'm a Muslim, I'm a for not. We'll cast our vote on him. Announcing is a man that people will like. He's a man that we can, our can, we people in Nigeria like it. Like it. Please. That's all you people always bring religion into something. No, you cannot take it you cannot you cannot take it sunny way. We have to understand the truth and agree with the truth. Please, your judiciary, I am begging you, do the right thing. All eyes are on you. Do the right thing. The evidence it will be will bring to the court is, is to every, every eye you see, every, even though you are blind, you will hear. I didn't see anything that uh uh will bring to the court. You can't it, no evidence, no thing to bring no thing bring to the court. So why would you, uh, why would someone working on for Tinibu or uh since Peter Oji day and be working for Tinibu that you they were not now look, no matter what you people do, or light and you nothing, you have nothing to be uh, announced to you as a woman. You have to give us our mandate. Our mandate blunt we of Nigeria. We have decided when we cast our vote. And our mandate must give to us, no matter what anyone will do. And I want to let you know, you hypocrisy, hypocrisy, Nigeria. Let me tell you, God will visit every one of you one by one. If you decided to fail us, this time, uh, this time we uh, are. If you decided to fail us, God will judge every one of you. 
give Obi the right mandate. He is the owner of the mandate. Thank you, for Ms. Alice. All right, thank you, Enterprise. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your wonderful submission. All right, guys. Uh, God bless you. I'd like to take some calls. A couple, couple of people were trying to call in just now. In case you want to call in now, this is the best time. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Lord of God is my strength. Thank you very much for calling in. Good evening to you, madam. Talk to us. Two minutes. Uh, good evening. Good evening, Nigeria. Good evening, everyone on the panel and on the comment section. Uh, good evening, um, uh, Mommy Diaspora. And uh, Sister Pat, everyone, Oma, you call Oma, yeah, and uh, Sister Rita, Atlas, everyone, and the brothers that just said, uh, finish speaking now. Thank you. Ah, this brother really said my mind, do God bless him. Yes. You see, you started this, uh, video, this uh, program with uh, one, uh, one man that was talking about what religion, no, one, uh, I think it's a quote from one, uh, is a French man, I don't know, about what religion has done to us. Yes. Religion in Nigeria has really destroyed that country. And that is what is setting Nigeria apart. That is what is making the Muslim always say, oh, we are, we are Muslim, we are Islam, Islam is this. You know, they, they use it to eat into us. They use it to 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 to, sell, to make us be a part of each other. You see, okay. For example, now I'm sorry. I just want to use this word. Look at uh, this uh, church. I don't want to mention the name of the church. They have been in the camp now for since on Monday. On Monday, uh, this week that just come since on Monday, and they are still dirty tomorrow. I want to ask you, what God are they looking for? Which God is there for one week when they are supposed to be looking for for their own what to eat? And these same people, because I know some of the people that went there, they start making money to eat. They've lived their work, they've lived what they should do since on Monday, and they are under someone. So a woman be like that, controlling them for one week, praying prayer for them that when they go, nothing will happen in their life. And this same person is the one telling us that to pray for Tulumbu. So really talk to me is the one is, is what has destroyed Nigeria. And until we come out of it and look, let me the one thing I want to say. People think it's by going to a uh, one place and bound down and doing it that God will answer you. It's your mind. God does not look at what you do. What God looks at is your heart, the way your heart is. You might be going to church, but your heart is wicked. So all these things that our people are doing, they are just setting us apart. We should come away from all these things so that we all will come together and fight for the right of Nigeria. If they call all those people that went to that place in some Monday now, that they should come outside and protest for the right for Nigeria to grow, you will not see them there. Instead, they prefer to go and hide in one place for one week, claiming that they are praying that God will come down to them there. I don't understand. I don't get it. So for me, religion is a big problem, and we need to look into it and see how we are going to free ourselves from this, uh, from this international slavery that they brought to Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, madam. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Um, we don't have another call right now. Let me come back to the panel again. Okay, I have somebody on the phone. All right. Sorry, guy. Thank you, madam Joy, for calling in. Good evening to I you. Please talk to us. Happy weekend to you. Happy weekend, Mr. Nigel. Thank you so much. Thank you again. Um, uh, well meaning Nigeria, obedient nation, Nigel Watch nation and family our wonderful family we have come to become a family of you know a people that know what they want well-meaning nigerians i greet you all mr niger what you will never lose your reward thank you for all you do and i want to say something please sir hear me out you know um Wherever you're doing that is, you know, it's very, you know, you, you can imagine the ease at which you do this. I don't say, I don't negate the, the effort you, you put in, but you do it so effortlessly that from the outside, somebody will be like, oh, it's so easy. I, it's one of the most difficult job is to get people to sit down and listen to you six hours, eight hours, go back, review it. <laughs> but there is something I want to bring highlight to you. 
it is a gift it is a calling and you don't take it for granted one of the things that we needed so much in this country is education and you have provided that platform that is why everybody is glued if i miss it one day i go back because it is it's like this is what we have waited for just like we have waited for a person like mr peter will be Nigerians are not full. We know what is going on. Our hearts are have ached for. I mean, to be honest, since 1914, our our forefathers have cried out, and today we have a man like Mr. Uh, Niger Watch doing his due diligence. And I beg you, I pray, and I ask you, you will continue to do this unless you find someone better than you, because one of the things this nation needs is this educating, letting the people know what is going on and exactly. knowing where to run to, to get the right information, which is what you are providing. And I want to uh, say two things addressed to, to uh, people, and that is, I'll be specific, America, France, UK. I, I talked to these three nations. You see, before we are first humans, before we become whatever else we choose to be, we are humans. And I ask the leaders in America, in France and UK, my question to them is, how do you people sleep? How do you sleep watching and enjoying the dividends from the inhumane, abject level of poverty and insecurity that have been unleashed on the nations and the people you have gained so abundantly from their wealth. I ask you, for before you become what you are, before you, are, you want to get all this for your own nation, you, all of you are individually humans playing the game of uh, a beautiful house, uh, nobody is home, is what you're playing because you think Nigeria has no leadership. And I know how that came about. That is because you people have relegated Nigeria to a, a between Nigeria as at today is between 1914 and 1967 with recycled rulership of impunity. The people that are, are here today are not are not different from the ones that have been in, in 1964. The question is, we all know what you're getting, but where, where is your humanity? And I bring this to, I, I, for some reason, I, I just decided I don't want to address the leadership because, you know, uh, 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 they have been in this situation. They have power, but there is no authority. We have never supported them. We put our votes, they steal it. They take it away. Now we have someone we, from our mind, we know this man can do it. That's why we are supporting Mr. P.O. And I address uh, judiciary. Now judiciary, listen to me. <laughs> you see, you, this is your time. This is opportunity the, to, to reckon, to become a force to become a force to be reckoned with in this nation, Nigeria. And I tell you, Judiciary, you, you can do it. You can do it. You can sever these two-headed snake, the West and the Cabal that have held Nigeria hosted. You can sever, you can cut it today as you make your decision. You can let Nigeria breathe by making, taking the right choice, by making the right decision. Because let me tell you, Judiciary, what is at stake. This is not just about Mr. P.O.'s mandate. This is the mandate of all well-meaning Nigerians who have waited for, between, even between 1914, waited for a man that is, that is bold enough to take the bulls by the horn. And Mr. P. has appeared. And we all well-meaning Nigeria are behind him. And we are waiting for this this you you're, what you're going to call out and we are ready the 133 million youths are ready they they we have intellectuals among them we have scientists among them we have economists 
we have those, but they are not going to join this quagmire, this rat race that is going on at the corridors of power. They are not going to dent themselves. They are not going to join the mod. They are waiting for the right person to come up. And you'll see Nigeria transform. And we are going to do it with or without you. But I advise you do the right thing so that you be in the history of those that make Nigeria. Don't be afraid of the West. They will play with it. They will work with anybody that is going, are going to uh, 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 put them to the table. So... I rested there. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Niger Watch. I appreciate you so much. God bless you. God bless you, man. Thank you very much for your wonderful submission. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you judiciary do the right thing. A lot of Nigerians are very, very, very uh, expecting a wonderful uh, judgment from you. You know, um, it's, a, it's the best time for you to build a name for yourself. You know, as you know, a lot of Nigerians, 95% of Nigerians don't trust the judiciary in Nigeria. So this is the time for you to restore your name. Thank you very much, my people. I appreciate you all. I would like to hear from um, somebody from the panel. Let me start with uh, Oga Felix. Oga Felix, are you there with us? We are the wrong to go. We are busy with the wrong Yes. First question. As I take the one today, we be say we as number one. Na na you na la you just read me now na na na. So you not just happy, you read me. You said you don't talk about the Emilio Kong. All right, all right. I'm just saying talk. Uh, na na your turn. Na today you na Emilio Kong. You know. All right. Thank you, my brother. Talk to us. Hey, I. I greet everyone, all our viewers, all the panelists, commercial warriors, and others. First and foremost, all the Westerners, go and do your research very well. Every living human being in this planet Earth, we are born black. Do your research. You guys are trying to depopulate black race. Meaning, the fight you are fighting, you are fighting against your ancestors. Which is not possible for you to conquer and be victorious. Because they gave birth to you. You can never say, going to Africa, to destabilize them, you will be stabilized. Never. It can't happen. I happen to be a friend in the country, Italy, where I live. A friend of mine who was the former minister of Agri. I asked him, what, we were having a discussion one day. I asked him, do you know why? No matter all the earthquake that have put in this country, there is no black race who is a victim. He said, it is true. I said, do you know why? He said, no. I said, because our ancestors that your ancestors brought here during slave trade that they forcefully used them after using them to build the nation. They buy them. Now their spirit, now they're hungry. That is why they are angry what you people did to them. That is why they are on a revenge mission. He was silent for like a minute. He said, my friend, Felix, you are right, too. Because I have never seen such happen. Then, let me deviate from there. My beloved sister, I guess, is a sister uh, busy brain that called first, who said that it is religion that have caused all, all this harm we are. Let me be specific love, here. Love of God, love of God is my strength. Not okay, sorry. Yeah. 
Let me be specific here. It is Western religions, not African religions, because African religions are still out there, uniting each and every one. It is the Western religion they brought to us to destabilize us that is causing all this problem we have in the world. Who are the Americans? The Red Indians. The people we now know today as America, America, they are the Europeans who invaded. They are good innovation. They come to Nigeria, come to Africa, come to Edo State, Benin City to invade us. All they know how to do is invasion. That is why judiciary, if you know what is good for you, interpret the constitution that guide the country. It wasn't written by a single man, although it was written by some group of people who came together that they think that this constitution will guide us. Since the constitution has not been amended now, by the Nigerians, Africans, interpret that constitution very well in your judgment, final judgment in the petition court. Or else, the Westerners, some of you want to fight for, they are being the one dealing with you, people, all of us, extracting our, our, our raw materials, are giving up spinot. Nije, whether Nigeria, Bola, Tilubu, any selected president, switch on your light or no, you have all it takes. All you have to do. The military leader over there right now. Go into an agreement. With the uranium, I talk about the desert, the solar system. With the uranium, you can generate powers. Just as the other master with the video my beloved brother Elvis presented to us not quite long ago. Nigerians will be the one to beg for your, for your alignment and others. Because if they shut down your airspace, where are other African countries? As they shut down your airspace, Burkina Faso, Mali, and the Red, shut down your airspace. Let's see where the other African echo who call themselves so echo us, where they are going to fly through. Let's see where they will be flying. They are, they are flying so. Where they are going to rule their flies so from Asia or America before they come back to Africa. Let's see where they are going to pass. Because there's no time to laugh. To marry made this time to grab the bull by their horns because the westerners have done a lot of harm than good to the Africa, the motherland of the worldwide of this of this whole universe. God do not make a mistake by giving us all the resources. Why? Because we are the mother, it is the mother that owns the kitchen. Who cooks and feed the whole family and the children? That is why God bless us with all the mineral resources we have. No matter of the extraction they have extracted from us, we still have more than enough. Just that we have bad leaders and bad dealers who have been compromised, extracting the crude raw materials for themselves and their cabas. Not only leaders. You see, when we are sending messages. My beloved brother, prophet, Mr. Nigeria Watch, Mr. Evis, I call you prophet today because you saw many things that many people did not see ahead before the election. When we are telling you people, come, let's come together. This is the holy man that can survey the land. The political dealers have, have, pol have been polluted with all kinds of things. You decide to work with him. Now, see, he's bringing a war to your doorsteps. Is that not enough for you to think twice 
and come to your senses. Come back to us, we beautiful Nigerians. We will accept you warmly with a warm reception. Let's fight these people because both you did not talk about they these people mean no good things for you people they don't have any good thing to offer you people that is why we have been crying obi said show me a place a store where the muslim or the christian buy bread cheaper so that i will go there to buy it was a, a clear, direct message for you people to learn. But some of you decide to be compromised and work with the highest selected Nigeria president. The J is our brothers, they are our sisters, our mothers, our fathers. We have been together for ages. Their country was named under the under the river Ninja. Which is Niger. And we also even have a ninja state in our country. For you to know that there is a spiritual forces that binded us right from the creation of the continent, Africa. Nigerians, please don't be angry with, with the decision of the echoes of, of the INS elected president Tunubu. Don't be angry with all Nigerians because we are not in support of all the shenanigans that is going on. I, I dare tell you, I told you yesterday, if you know you are that same Jagaban you claim to be, go to Aso Villa, relax there. Stay there, then you will know the stuff the well meaningful Nigerians are made of. They say power to the people. That is why they call it democracy. It is the people that decide who will rule them. Not the selective cabals that will decide who will rule a large country as Nigeria. Nigeria is the heart of Africa. And Edo State happened to be the heart of Nigeria. I'm grateful. I'm happily a bona fide son of Edo State. Look at the tag in the in, 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 Edo, in Edo plate number. Have bit of the nation. When the heart is gone, on. when Nigeria is gone, the whole Africa is gone. That is why the Westerners they are trying to inject one or two skis to bring Nigerians down by sending them promising fake promises to to the Tifunubu to go to war for the Inije to send me the truth. Why would? America, France, and others. Let's say, let me say personally, France, why haven't they sent their own troops to invade Niger? Are they not the people that colonized them? Then the global ECOWAS communities said they want to send their troops. Says who? We decide what we do with our land, what we do with our father, where the military forces, our sisters, our mothers. We decide because they are our. People, because we don't want to send them there as a, a slaughter goat or lamb. We have Nigeria army are be there for Africa for peacekeeping, not to cause crisis. How many countries in Africa have Nigeria? Fighting, fight against for war. Never be they no money go there to put a peace in any country. Ambassador did the same thing recently for the war. Is it in, in Kenya or I don't, Somalia? I don't remember. He all those the Korean and the other people. He went there to put peace there. This is the is the country who will be fighting this war. The Western, the America, the China, the the Asians. They are unable to put war. just only one visit. He was unable to put peace there. We are not for peace, not for all these shenanigans Tinubu is doing at the Echo Wars. Compromise Kabas. Judicia, do the rightful team now for that matter to be disqualified so that we can face Africa. You can't come to my state to mine my resources 
without any com any company to refine those resources as the Burkina Faso military must say we are open for dialogue you want my resources come put the company here it will create employment development in the country that's what we need in Africa Gaddafi blessed memory he once said he said democracy is not made for Africa judicial if you want democracy to be in Africa, do the right thing. Disqualify Tinubu with all the evidence you people have at your table. It's more than enough. Just only one. America decide not to release the criminal file because they are promising many things to go into the the Western and the Americans have. I have tried a law to cause crisis in Nigeria. Our past political dealers have a, a, little, a little brain because they know when they come in and invade Nigeria, Africa is gone. That is why no matter what happened in Nigeria, whether Hesmer, Boko Haram, we have suffered a, 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 a lot. The Westerners was unable to come and uh, divide us, cause crisis, that we make them to come to extract our mineral resources. Tinubu never understand that because it's an old man with a baby brain. Go and ask Babangida or Ban Sajo and the rest how they manage to push these Westerners away that they were unable to cause war and crisis in Nigeria. For them to come in and extract our crude oil, our our mineral resources, California and others, you have to learn from the past political dealers. I call them dealers because they dealt with us as well. I greet you, my people. Let's unite, northern leaders, western leaders, eastern leaders, middle belt, and others. Let's unite, judicial. Do the rightful thing now. We are not begging. If one man cook for you, for a thousands of people, it will be okay. They will they will enjoy and, 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 and feed their stomach. But when a crowd cook for one man, will he be able to finish it? You have to have a rethink. If you decide to follow the compromise political dealers and pass the draw judgment. Okay, no problem. But wait for what we have in us as in Nigeria, as the crowd, 200 million people. The heat that we hit you people. They might have threatened you, I don't care. Somebody sacrifice. Jesus Christ sacrificed his life for the salvation that is being celebrated for today. You have to pay the ultimate sacrifice. To salvage our land right now. I guess that is what I have to say for now. Sorry, my people, I'm a little bit upset today because the OT don't pass me. I beg. Let's do this together. Thank you, Mr. Ivies, for all you have done, Thank for you. all you are doing, and for all you will do for the salvation of Nigeria and Africa at large. I greet you, my people. Thank you very much. Thank you, Oga Felix. Thank you very much today. Uh, I'm surprised, you know, you really, really nailed it. Thank you very much for going that far to give a submission. God bless you. Thank you, guys. Um, if you can hear me, please press on the like button. Um, help us to oh, share. Wait. Let me call on the next person. What? Thank you. All right, uh, let me call on the next person to speak to us. Uh, Prince Akwashi, thank you very much, sir, for your patience. Please talk to us, sir. Yes, uh, Mr. Ivis, uh, uh, good afternoon from here, and uh, good evening uh, to those in Nigeria, and then, the, you know, uh, greetings to all panelists. Um, of a truth, Mr. Felix, you, I, I know you will know, you don't finish the whole talk now. We are going to come from up now, but I go try. Eh? Now, first and foremost, um, I want to thank the first speaker. Uh, he did justice 
to the topics. Um, I want to thank uh, the second speaker, the third, and then uh, Mr. Felix. Uh, let me start from religion. You know, when we tell our people certain things about religion, they think, oh, you are evil. You know, they call you, they say, ah, this one sit and don't take your head, oh, you know, they go to church again, oh, no, da, 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 da. He, you know, he, you know they, they give you instant judgment and all that. And I've been trying to tell them that Christianity or whatever faith you are in doesn't require a particular building. Even in the Bible, I've never seen anywhere where Jesus said, you must go to this particular building. No. Rather, what I saw was Apostle Paul encouraging uh, um, other people when he said, fellowship with one another. He did not say go to one building. As a matter of fact, the apostles of old, they were kind of like in different places when they want to uh, worship. They don't go to a cathedral or synagogue and all that kind of a thing. No, they were doing their thing. Um, during the election, somebody came up with all these uh, religious things and da 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 the same person that one of the people that brought this religion thing when we when we talk we talk about uh uh el rufai i will call his name he's evo el rufai today because of what happened or whatever he must have done or brother probably somebody has revealed a secret and then he knows that he's not gonna go through with uh uh the minister's thing he decided to withdraw himself and then he said he's going to Netherlands to study. Ha ha, I laugh. In Netherlands, I hope he's going to close his eyes. Because in Netherlands, then they put and then they showcase Amo, he did for uh, uh, show glass. So I hope so he will close his eye. You know, that's to show you the hypocrisy. The same place he's going to. Do those people propagate? religion but he's going there to study he's going there to acquire knowledge the same thing that he can do in his state but no he will instigate a, a, a religious world people against people and people will be high and he will do nothing and tomorrow he wants to go there to do his uh, 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 phd or whatever ah, in get luck in get luck i know they that place now now i for i for visit them for that school you know help them you know you know, study well, well, for help them, just visit them. That being said, um, going to, um, uh, for food, coyote, for me, for food, coyote is a chameleon. And I've always depended on a, on an adage that says, a great hunter does not hunt for chameleon. You know why? Because it changes its color. Okay, before you know it, it you know, the, it will aim and think it's a grain. And by the time it, you know, the, 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 uh, the hunter will do whatever he has to do, it will change to a black or brown or whatever it is that it does. So for me, he is just a testament of how low some people can stoop in order to get food, in order to get food. Because no matter how much you must have stolen, at the end of the day, when you take a naira, say one naira out of a million, it's no longer a million, no. It's no longer a million, you know. So all those things he, he was doing all those times is because his money was depleted. So in other words, he just wants to support Jagaban and do what they got to do. No, 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 no. He should not, he should not, uh, 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 you know, talk as if he's speaking the minds of the masses. No, Jagaban should go to war. Ah, he should go to Niger. They are waiting for him. The Wagners are waiting for him. And I pleaded, please, Russia, Wagners, if you guys hear us, it's not Nigerians. All we need, you know, guys to do is Go to that asshole rock and chase out the rats. He is the one. 
is not us. Make sure you deal with him. And make sure you disgrace him in front of, you know, the, 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 the world so that others will learn, will learn a lesson. You know? And just uh, 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 this other woman trying to, uh, 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 you know, say, oh, that she's not involved in all this uh, 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 bribing of uh, the judicial people or whatever it is. Mario Dile is synonymous with Wike, yes, or Wike. So he should not lie. She should not lie. Okay? She should not lie. I, 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 I so much believe in the fact that all these people that uh, when when their names are mentioned, the next thing you see them come out and say, oh, I know, I didn't say that. I, I was not involved. Da, 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 da. Can we bring the African way, which is juju, and give it to them? Let them, you know, uh, uh, the white chalk. Let them lick it. In as much as I don't believe so much in that white chalk, but at, at least that thing will do something. That thing will do something. If they can, if they, if they can come out and leak that in front of people, good. And then let's see what's gonna happen. But this one, they, whenever there are any of them is being caught, they will come out and say, "No, my hands are not there. I was, I was not in bubble. They are tarnishing my image." Yeah, 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 yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm about to uh, institute a, a lawsuit. Lawsuit kill I, all of them there. May lawsuit tie them. They are wrong. And to tell you the truth, do I have every reason to believe that she's involved? Yes. Why? Because her husband came out a long time ago. That's uh, during the, uh, the uh, before um, Yadua and Co. were elected. And for some reason, they thought they could buy uh, Obasanjo over. But Obasanjo did not sway towards their end, of which Obasanjo told them that it would be unfair. Him being a South, a, a, a South, a South person will finish and then hand over to another South person. That would not be right. And since that time, this man has been nursing this grudge. This man has been nursing this grudge. He was among the people that went to, to, to Asso Rock. The, the class of, uh, 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 is it 99 governors? He was a monk. In their presence, is he not uh, Ibori? Is he not, uh, 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 um, what do you call it, uh, uh, Logic Benedium that was in their midst? And an addict says, show me your friend and I will, I will tell you who you are. There are some governors that did not go there, which shows that their hands are clean. But those corrupt ones went there. They died. They ate. And uh, at the end of the day, oh, we will support you. Don't worry. Because at the end of the day, in their cars or whatever convoy that they have, they all have a, a Ghana must go over there. And they will come, tomorrow they will, they will come and tell me that they are, they are, they are, that they are not involved. Please, they should, they should enter house. If it's according to uh, Sister Rita, they should, they should enter house. I beg, you know. So in the at the end of the day, like I said, I think Felix has finished what I'm, I wanted to say. So I will, I will tell the judiciary they are all simple now, you know. She be one of them right before now. They tell us when they when they bring the new person put inside. They tell did they tell us? But we knew, we knew, you know. We are watching. And by the grace of God, if they do anything contrary to the truth, may it not be well with them. That's all I can say for now. I yield for, for now. Thank you. Yes, I say a big amen to that. You know, uh, it, it shall never be well with these people because what they have done to us, if you check it, Nigerians are really doing well for themselves when they move out of Nigeria. You know, if you guys check it properly, Nigerians are doing well all over the world when we move out of Nigeria. But when you are in Nigeria, it's a problem. It's a problem. A lot of talent, a lot of uh, uh, dreams have been hindered. 
in this country because of this satanic people that is leading and is ruling us for God since God knows when. Thank you very much, uh, Prince Akwashi. It's good to have you on the panel again. Thank you, my people. I appreciate you all. Um, press on the like and share. You know, now we can, you know, now Saturday we be. When I don't buy me coffee, wait till they happen now. I don't still offend you now. And every day I think they offend, now I think, now I think they offend you now. I'll be. All right, no problem. Uh, babe, make una, if I don't feel buy me coffee today, no wala, but make una press on the like because I always like our voices to go far. Currently, we have 405, 405 on the lights. If we can take that to 500, that would be nice. Press on the like button, my people. Thank you, 406 now. Thank you very much. Somebody just listen to me. At least, at least somebody listen to me today. And not even the people where I never offend. You know, na 409, na, na, God, God bless you now. <laughs> All right, let me call on the next person on the panel to talk to us, which is Mother Busy Brains. Mother, Mother Busy Brains, it's good to have you on the panel. Good evening to you, man. Let's talk to us. Okay, Mother Busy Brains is not there. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Mr. Ike, Mr. Ike Jude, it's good to have you on the panel once again. How are you doing today, sir? Good evening to you. I'm fine, my brother. It's been uh, some time I've not been around in the panel. Yeah, um, I noticed. Walk, yeah. walk and walk and walk. So today, weekend, gives me the opportunity to rejoin the group I love so much to listen to. You know, you might be in a place where you can only listen in, but you won't be able to, to contribute. Talk, yes. You know, yes. so so we stay at the background and monitor and see what's going on. Thank you very um, much. Thank you. Sincerely, we are very happy and impressed at the continuous pressure the country has put on on this government. The pressure is too much. It's never mm -hmm. been like this before. You know what it is when elections are done and one month after everybody will move on totally. But oh, this has refused to go down. Exactly. This has refused to go down. The pressure has been mounted, especially to those that are in the social media platform. You know, so that's why your work is bigger than one million people protesting. Because the moment you go and physically protest, they will declare a state of emergency and will stop. Nothing will happen again about the tribunal. And that's why they desperately want to go to this war. Because the constitution of Nigeria says if there is war, that you suspend every other thing and declare a state of emergency. So there wouldn't even be date of judgment. It won't come anymore. You know? So when you look at it very well, the obedience has permeated into the fabrics of every part of the world. All these top politicians you see, their drivers are obedient, but they are silently doing it. Their heads are obedient. So by the time a driver takes his ogre to another politician's house, he immediately sends a message to say, please, oh, don't say I told you, my ogre just visited this person now. And so when this platform or some of these people say it, they will tell you with all, cert all certainties that they know that this man just went to this place. When, when they was talking about all their plans ahead, when he talked about the role that Fashola is playing, he challenged them to, to, to make public their phone their, their, their phone discussion, they their, 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 their challenge them to bring out their phone records. But they wouldn't. So you don't expect them not to come out and deny to say, oh, no, we didn't do it. But what happens is, the moment you reveal a secret of somebody, he stops. He say, oh, they've blown open our secrets. So obedience are doing a lot. They are everywhere, both inside and outside the country. That's why it is difficult for politicians to even speak on the phone now. They don't even know whether the person that is at the sweet boss in one of these telecommunication companies are obedient. So by the time your call goes through, they will see it. So they are scared to talk on the phone. They are scared to visit each other. They are scared to have a meeting. Because the people that are organizing that meeting, they don't even know where they belong to. You heard what Dave Umahi said. This man, he said that while he is following APC, his family members, 
his immediate family voted Obi. So how will you now sit with your wife to discuss about what you want to do? You don't even know your wife is obedient. Because they all see the problem. Everybody is suffering. I was trying to get a ticket for my mom to UK. It is $4,800. $4,800. Because you can't fly over the Niger Republic airspace. Everybody going to Nigeria now is flying an additional 1,000 miles to be able to go without going through Niger Republic. So it's affecting everybody. So think about the family of four that want to travel and how much they are going to pay. So when all these decisions are taken, you think it affects just a section of the people. It affects everybody. Every day, each time I try to open, I do the sign of the cross before I open my Nigerian WhatsApp. Because every day, the messages comes. And those messages are so, are so strong that you just can't ignore them. So if Nigeria is good, it's good for everybody. So that person that is driving you from one place to another also wants to live a good life. He wants to live a good life. That's why he is interested in revealing some of their wicked secrets against us. What does it take to announce the date for judgment? It doesn't take anything. But so much is happening at the background. So much is happening at the background. This government have seen that they don't have the, 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 the uh, uh, imprimatur of the, of the people. The people are not supported. So they now face the international community to see whether they could get anything from them. But it is difficult for international community to determine a president of another country. It has not worked. See, America and all the Western countries are so interested in the natural resources that we have in Africa. So if they can not get some of these resources from their foes, which is Russia, they will turn to Africa. So for you to wake up and say, oh, stop the playing of pipes that is going across our country. Can you imagine that you have a pipe that is taking something good under your own ground. And meanwhile, you don't have any benefit from it. Think about it sitting and beside your house, you hear the sound of gas or oil moving to another place and the dividends of those things you don't see. Nigeria Republic is the second poorest country in the world. And this Nigeria Republic has uranium, very large quantity of uranium. So you are helping the Western world sustain their economy. Meanwhile, you are dying in poverty. So if anybody goes and say, we will not allow this, they will do everything possible to suppress you. How do you even do this fight? How? Our military have not been involved in any war lately. They've been doing police work. They've been going from one state to another, mounting roadblocks. Is it the same military you want to use for external war? You can't. You can't. And you don't want your house to be a place where two, two international superpower want to fight. Think about it. If two of your friends come in your house and they have misunderstanding and they want to fight, you will tell them, please don't fight in my house or go outside and fight. Because if they are fighting in your house, there's a possibility of breaking your television or other things you have. I have lived in Sokoto before. Walking into Niger Republic is like walking from one village to another. I have gone, I have driven into Niger Republic from Sokoto, do my things and come back again. When you get to the border, are, in fact, we don't even need to call it border. Because people walk in and walk out. People live in Niger Republic and walk in, in, in Sokoto, in Ilela. People, Niger Republic is, is using Naira like we use Naira in Nigeria. So how do you want to do this war? You are practically fighting yourself. 
So there's no way you do it without a catastrophic uh, 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 problem against us. They intermarry. They do everything together. So you now want to go and fight because you are looking for legitimacy. Or maybe they have said, if you don't fight, we will reveal this. So when you have so much baggages, you don't you, you, you dance to the tune of other people that have all of those information against you. So we've got to get it right. If our, if our politics is not gotten right, not, on, not, 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 nothing again will develop. To do businesses in Nigeria is becoming so difficult. There's nothing you buy with a foreign currency and send to Nigeria that you won't cry, you won't weep doing that. Is it car? You send the car before the two months it gets to Nigeria, the cost of clearing it has doubled. What else can you do? Now, on Airfly, you see, the internet has a way of keeping everything you have said in the past. And because they say that politics has no permanent enemy, it doesn't have any, any permanent friend, but to have permanent interest. There are some people that don't forget. Before faith brought Tinubu and Erofai together, go and listen to the things Erofai has said against Tinubu. Go and check. He once said he would never be a running mate to a drug baron. That's what he said. He has even told Lagos people that he will come to, he will tell them, teach them how to walk without their godfather. He has said so many things. Forget about people like Nuhuri Badu that once went and talked about how bad Tinubu is. But just because of position, he has forgotten all of those things and is now serving under that same government. But there are some people that don't forget what they have said in the past. So Tinubu wouldn't even go out to fight for air or fire because of some of those things that people are reminding him, he said. Forget about people like uh, Wiki that can say something yesterday and the next day he changes. There are some people that will not forget. If Amy Fanny Kayode could say whatever he likes, if he was called as one of the ministers, do you think he would make this current statement? He wouldn't. But all of those things have been done and he wasn't selected. Now he has started saying something else. So let's not follow politicians. We must get our leadership right. If we get it right, all of us will enjoy. We will all enjoy. Even the politicians that are doing this thing will also enjoy. You can imagine filling the tank of your car with 70,000. That's like two or three months salary of some people. Use it to fill the tank of your car. And then the prices will continue to go up provided we don't have any local refinery. Nobody will buy dollars at the rate of 900 naira per dollar and go and import fuel and sell at a loss. So even the current price they are selling, it is a loss. So government cannot, government cannot also come out that to say they are not subsidizing it because if they don't subsidize it, we can't buy fuel at even at 617, considering what the exchange rate is now. So they are scared to increase it Rather, they rather subsidize it secretly without telling anybody. So when you have an illegitimate government, the grace, will, grace of God will go. Every policy will become anti-people. Even the ones you think that are right, you think it is good, by the time you bring it out, because there is no grace, because there is no legitimacy, you can't build on nothing. It will turn out to be bad. You are saying, can you imagine our president saying that the heads and all of these people that they are going to give to this overbloated cabinet is still a way of employment? So if you now have 48 ministers, you say, oh, we are employing more people because we have more ministers as against people that had 40 that employed less people. That's a dumb, that's a dumb argument. So you think in government employing more people is a way of, of, of reducing unemployment rates? Factories are going. I personally have, have worked with uh, 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 Glasso. 
I was I was very, very sad that Glasso is leaving Nigeria after 51 years. And that's the one we know. There are so many people that are silently moving. In the last administration, more than 4 million jobs were lost in Nigeria. People will move and go to Ghana. I saw some of the companies I worked for and I worked as in, in their media department that are now in Ghana. And we never come back. So whatever they produce in Ghana, they ship it into Nigeria and sell and take their money back into Ghana. So the employment, all of those people that were employed with that company will go and join the overcrowded labor market. People are seeing any way out. How could anybody, instead of, instead of staying in Nigeria, will prefer to go on the desert without food, without drink, and take all the risk just because you want to leave? Some of them, they will draw it in the map and tell you, and when you look at it in the map, you think Morocco to, to Spain is so, is so near. Those are maps. But in reality, you are crossing a very big ocean. And our people are doing it every day just to leave the country. And our politicians are comfortable. And some section of the public are saying you are standing on a, on a mandate. What mandate? What mandate? Mr. Niger Watch, we have issues. We have issues. Everybody will have to add his voice. Everybody will have to add his voice. We just cannot go on the streets. They have so popularized our people. They are so hungry that they won't even be able to walk and protest. They have made our people so hungry. If you call them to protest, if you call them to come on the streets, they will say, at least I need to eat before I come on the streets. And it could, get, it could get worse. It could get worse. I rest my case. Oh, wow. Thank you very much sir, for saying it like this. The situation is terrible, but I believe this is the time for everybody to be proud of themselves as Nigerians. Um, this matter, eh? the, 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 the most difficult part of it is that there is the repetition of it. Coming out every day, calling out the judiciary to do the right thing, calling on an election that we, 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 we will do since February, by now we are still on it. It's terrible. It's so, so, so. I don't know how to describe it, but we are almost there. We're almost there. We have um, a max of two weeks from now, but I have uh, a strong feelings that certainly this coming week judgment will be passed. I believe judgment will be passed between Tuesday and Wednesday. So. Let's keep our fingers crossed that everything happened in our favor. In Jesus' name, amen. I appreciate every one of you, my people. Thank you very much. I'd like to quickly appreciate um, Gift I14. Thank you very much for your super chat. May God bless you. Love God is my strength. Thank you very much for your super chat. May God bless you. I appreciate you all, my people. Please uh, continue to help us to share. Press on the like button. Press on the dollar sign. Support what we're doing here. I appreciate you all, my people. Thank you. Let me call on the next person to speak to us, which is a uh, okay. I can see that busy brains. I don't know if you are there now. If you are not there, I think it's the right time. Uh, we just you came in, uh, peace soft, peace soft. Uh, good evening to you, sir. Thank you very much for joining us once again today. Please talk to us. That's the quickest calling ever. Very much. I appreciate you. <laughs> thank you panelists thank you listeners uh, I just jumped in kind of like this is an interesting topic uh, seeing uh, SSK you know making a U-turn uh, trying to preach peace but it, it, it can never be trusted it can never be trusted I know I know but if you if you if you if you connect the dot between uh uh um, Aerofire rejecting uh, uh, ministerial appointment 
and uh, FFK is 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 on a, uh, a kind of a, on the floaty point right now. So that will give you some kind of you know message or an idea. There's of something what, going on. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You are not saying now. So because right now FFK is uh, is at uh, at a floaty point with me. Mm -hmm. He's not balanced right now, you know. Sierra uh, Five, you know, declining some sort of offer. We know these guys. We know they don't have shame. You know, we know that uh, if things were going on, you know, correctly for them, they don't care what what you say. They would just uh, you're something. So now they know that things are going bad. So they are on a floating point. Uh, you know, uh, FFK is a very smart dude. I've known him a very very long time. A very very long time. He's a smart dude, uh, but he's uh, he's very very he's, he can easily you know sway because of uh, you know benefit what he wants to get. But when it comes to anal analysis, you know he's a very smart dude. But it's just unfortunate that uh, uh, we have people like that who are supposed to be smart, working for the Nigeria people, being on the side of the satanic people. You know, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. These are guys that, you know, with their brains, you know, they could, you know, they could be useful to the society actually. But how they find themselves in, in the camp of, uh, you know, uh, these satanic people is something we don't just, uh, we don't understand. I just don't get it sometimes, you know. Sometimes I looked at them kind of like, I don't get it how these guys operate, you know. If we come down to like the other lady, the the former justice, uh, Supreme Court justice, uh, Odili, uh, Mary Odili. If you look at most of the cases she's handled for a very long time, you know, in the past, she has influenced a lot of cases in Nigeria. She's a very well known uh, judge, very well known to the Nigeria states, very well known judge. You know, she has influenced a lot of cases, you know, and most of the cases she stepped in. Those cases she, she always go through, you know, and uh, I think we need to call her out quickly because uh, I I don't want her to interfere in this uh, uh, for this information for this rumor to come out. We need to call her out very quickly and uh, ensure that uh, it's not just she denying it. I believe that uh, she must have made some uh, some moves. Uh, you know, for her to be called out, you know, we really do need to call her out and tell her to step away from uh, uh, from all the from this very case. This, this, this is this very case is not a uh, it's a very delicate. It's very, very delicate. It's not something that could you know really affect the country positively or uh, negatively because everybody just waiting for the judgment. And uh, for whatever reason, we don't even know why this thing is taking too long. I'm no longer comfortable, and I do not want it to even take too that too long, you know, because uh, everybody is just anxious. Everybody is anxious. You see that the country is down or the country is gone. That's it, you know. We don't want our people to look at my my brother just finished talking. See, look at the passion. Everything he said is true. Look at everything. People are suffering. People are suffering. See, if you have money, you might not even know this thing that much. Oh, okay. people are suffering. They are helpless. They don't know what to do. They are helpless. They're just hoping that somehow, somehow, something sh should just happen. A lot of, uh, you, if, let me tell you, a lot of Nigerians believe that the military should take over. A lot of Nigerians, they just believe that. That is, I think, it's time for the military to just take over in Nigeria. A lot of Nigerians, if that happens in Nigeria, forget it. People are going to support. They, they are talking about Niger. They should, they, they, maybe they, they, they are playing chess. They don't know what's going on. It's a war chess that's currently playing. The, the Western world wants to use the uh, Nigerian government to play chess and then uh, make their own uh, profits uh, individually or uh, in, in, by group, you know to stylishly uh, sponsor and you create war because you know generals make a lot of money through war you know our generals here they want to go to war it's, it's nature because they are generals because they make a lot of money but it's the presidency the advisors the people with the president they are the ones that usually assess the situation hey we don't want to go to war we don't want to do this because of this and because of that they pull you 
pull generals out of war. Look at what Trump did. He pulled them all out of war because they were making billions of billions of dollars. That's, they are known for that. They don't care. They will sacrifice the younger officers for, 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 uh, for anything. It's, it's a nature to them. After all, they are generals. So it's the president, the advisors, they don't want to pull them out of war. You take that out, you take them out, you bring them back home. When President Trump put them all out, the generals were not happy. They were not happy. Look at what immediately he left. What happened? They immediately returned back to war. Immediately, and then they started with Ukraine. They didn't care. They don't really care. That's generous for you. So we really do need to call our, uh, our politicians out. Uh, I don't want to talk too much because I still have some stuff to talk about, maybe on the second round, if I'm giving the opportunity. Thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate okay. it. Thank you, Peace of, Uh It's good to hear your voice again, sir. Thank you very much uh, for your submission. My people, I appreciate you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will try. Let's see if we can close early today. I know not say it's not too easy. Coming out every day. Ah, God. Nami will be the happiest person. Eh? We, they pass this judgment by God's grace, you know, in our favor. I can't wait. Ah, thank you very much, my people. I appreciate every one of you right there. Let my, me call on my beloved brother. Sorry to interject. Yes, sir. Uh, just for 10 seconds, uh, for love for the before the second segment. If you play this, our beloved brother for fun, the video where you upload today, <laughs> the thing to go sweet. <laughs> eh, okay, I, I don't have it all, you know. Uh, if you can. Put it uh i don't really know his website uh that is the the name of his youtube now people they send the video for me no no no, no for the uh, youtube channel i'll forward, I'll forward it to you i'll forward it to you now for four comedy mama mia private, private mm. chat. yeah yeah i'll forward it to your private your phone directly okay if you can do that right away thank you sir god bless you all right let's quickly listen to what uh Ojiuzokalu have to say here. Thank you. Uh, the news got to us today that the um, Equus has decided to invade me, me Jay. Um, what is your opinion on this, sir? Well, thank you very much. I believe that President Tinibu is not president of Equus. I, I saw a press conference here in Washington DC that um, the president of ECOWAS have declared that ECOWAS service ships should move to war. And that is not Nigeria, but I'm still having my reservation that Nigeria should join ECOWAS to go to war. Because if the Americans want to go to war, they should use their troops. They have almost 3,000, 4,000 troops there in Niger. They don't need to say, we will give you money, President Tinibu, we will give you arms, just go and fight. It is dangerous to fight in our backyard. You don't know where this fight will end. Nobody knows who is sponsoring this fight. I think the advisors of President Tinibu, which I'm also one of them, will continue pleading on him not to join that fight. Since Nigeria Senate have already said, no, you can't go to war, and he needs authorization of the Senate to go to war. So I, I, I don't think it's a good idea to go to war. What they should go to the joint task to do now to put a democratic, a democratic process plan. They should give us a plan for one year, six months, two years plan to return to the civil, civil democratic process. Since they said the president of Niger, President Busum, have already resigned. Eh, let us take it like that. This thing happens once in a while. And, uh, I, I don't think any Nigerian soldier's head is good enough to be king for, for another country. It's not our war. It's an internal affair. It's an internal problem of Niger people. I hope my president and my friend and my uh, brother will understand that this is not our war. We have nothing to fight those people for. I, I want him not to listen to the US. I'm a friend of the US. I'm a friend of Israel. I'm a friend of UK. This is the first time I would like President Tinibu to disobey the U.S. It's not the right thing to do. We are not going to go to war. 
let us and nigeria and france have a transitional program for the for, with the soldiers they are niger they are, they are, they are, they are niger people they are not outside from there so let them plan transition in peaceful diplomacy uh agreements and all the rest of them they, they should reach an agreement concrete agreement to return to civil rule i'm not thinking they are going to war with Niger. One, they are our blood brothers. Secondly, it is very dangerous. You don't know who will join the war. They might invade Nigeria. We already have a lot of uh, problems with uh, uh, our minerals along those borders. And nobody should attempt taking us into war. We cannot go to war with Niger at all, at all. It's not the right thing to do. We must pull out of ECOWAS if it means pulling out of ECOWAS. Nigeria should pull out of ECOWAS, if that is ECOWAS decision. We're a sovereign nation. Nobody can toil with 250 million Nigerians. It's not possible. So I still plead, and it's just I'm in Washington. I could have gone to see President Tidibu. I still plead with him not to join the war. He's, he's chairman of ECOWAS, yes. But he also have a role to play to say, I'm not going to go to war. The United States want us to go to war. France want us to go to war. Why don't they put their soldiers and go to war? We'll give them the money to fight. Let them go to war on their own. We cannot go to war. This war is in our backyard. I plead with the president to listen to the voice of reasoning. The Senate have said no, and I'm joining the Senate. I wasn't in the Senate now. I was in the medicals, and uh, I see join the majority of Nigerians telling President Tinubu not to go to war for the sake of brotherhood and sake of Africa. Please. Hmm. Oh God, so you did wash it, you did your mash up for wash it. And from there, they send us messages say, hey, what a life. Ah, we don't suffer for these people, huh, though? He did wash it, and I mash on, I did so, he mash on. Mumu, mumu them, fools. That is fighting for these satanic people. You are there. You are suffering. You are suffering. Anyway, um, I, I guess this is the video you guys are talking about. Somebody just sent this one to me now. If not be then I I don't know. I don't know the video. But that, it's a, it's a heavy, that means that means that man was not even that was, that means did not even wait for them to 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 go on research before he left. That's what it means. I mean, this is, people, from, uh, is he part of the Senate? I don't know. I don't know he's part of the Senate, yeah. He's, uh, he's elected, you know, yeah. but this is what things that they do. He will not be there, but they will still pay him. Of course. Corruption. Yes. Very sad. Very, very sad. Let's move on. Let's listen to this. <laughs> My body is sweet. <laughs> As I see what did they happen now recently, as people I take the day on judicial. <laughs> as you be driving on now, <laughs> the fee announced the result wrong. <laughs> yes, they, will keep, they will keep my class. Like we did like this. <laughs> So who who won is that? So God is a lockdown, lockdown, lockdown. Imagine your life now. I'll say you be part of judiciary. Like this, you go to do. What else? What else? No pressure. Where are you? Where are you from? Come and say. The other part of the day, he said, if he did not give it to us, <coughs> then <laughs> you go to face Nigerians. Do the right thing. <laughs> Two 
non-political parties, two non-political organizations now. Now nah, they see yes, they won judiciary. You better do the right thing. <laughs> Nigerians are watching. <laughs> this one's now no be obedient to. So. This one's they no nothing concerned them concern political parties. And again, the judiciary does what is right. Because Nigerians are looking at the judiciary to see that if they will leave, be above board. And Nigerians are praying. They are praying for them. They are watching. They are vigilant. We don't want this country to go into chaos for a military intervention. We don't want this country. Tell them that we don't want Nigeria to go into chaos, sudden chaos over the matter at the tribunal or in, at the court. Therefore, the judiciary must save the country. They must do what is right now and make sure that the people are happy with them. All eyes are on the judiciary and all eyes are also on the government on these policies that have been shown out as if it is vengeful against the people. I don't know whether it's a vengeance Suddenly, you throw up uh -uh, more than 200% increase in fuel price. And you say you fill the plane. And you, you are not buying a pound of petrol or a liter. You don't pay. Everything you do is paid for by state resources. And then you say you fill my You can never fill my plane. You just take this chat. You better do the right. fact. Nigerians are praying for you today. <laughs> Which means they did something wrong in the Which means just the person went, I neck, they said a wrong thing. <laughs> so you have been given opportunity to right your wrong. <laughs> the other one, the toxic, nobody can threaten the judiciary. <laughs> Put the last in a threat. No. Why did they say that? No, even I said that the threat are from the other side. Yeah. So they threatened the judiciary from the other side that people will get up a hand. <laughs> Generally, across from all these tears and arms of government, and which is telling today on the lives of the ordinary Nigerians, um, we will say this: that um, any threat on the judiciary is a threat to democracy. This is an important tenet of democracy: that the judiciary must be free, must be independent, and then for rule of law to work. We must see it being operated, meaning justice must be done, and not only done, it must be seen to be done. It must be seen to be done. And unfortunately today, no one here today will beat his chest and say that we believe in the autonomy, we believe in the independence of our judiciary. Now, Permit me to go through some of the key things we have highlighted for Nigerians and the world to know. Uh, first, we have seen it that a senior advocate of Nigeria in a democratic dispensation will tell the world that if the judges uphold justice, there is going to be anarchy. Why not say that? If the justices or the judges now do injustice, there will be anarchy. If not in Nigeria, where would you have a senior advocate saying that when the judges do the right thing, there is going to be anarchy? Cop them and all well-meaning Nigerians are against these kinds of politically incorrect statements at the highest level. And uh, based on this... Let us recall on the legal profession itself, the presidency and all arms of government to come together and condemn these approaches and condemn such utterances before our own judges, whose life might be put into danger if perchance they take what that very lawyer is saying, because it's a democratic and it's a threat. It's undemocratic and it is a threat. Now, more so, not long ago, last week, there was uh, a support group or a coalition of support groups 
of APC held in Kaduna who came out to tell the world that only God can remove Tinibu from office. Now, for the media itself to carry this, this is a threat to our democracy. Why do we have a judiciary? Why do we have the election petition tribunals? And why do we have all the tears of a hierarchy of courts in Nigeria? It's for justice to be done and be seen to be done. So for any group to be given a voice to come to tell the world that only God can remove the, the president from his uh, position is simply anti-democratic and in fact this should be labeled as treason because our constitution is a supreme law operating in Nigeria and then we are one nation under God but God has given us the instruments of the constitution to be used and then the relevant laws to be applied for justice to be done and be seen to be done. Uh, on this also, we urge on all Democrats, compatriots, Cobdemites, and all who are interested in an egalitarian Nigeria and society to condemn these approaches and to condemn these utterances as undemocratic. Our law enforcement agencies, too, are involved in this because everyone must play. Okay, thank you. Thank you, my people. Uh, we have to stop that video right there. Uh, yes, all about judiciary doing the right thing. Thank you very much, my people. Please uh, help us to share this broadcast. Share, 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 and let's do this together. I can see the likes i i asked earlier on that we, we should just take it to at least 500 500 night talk you know i bet make one join me we could do this one together you know press on the like button let's take that to 500 if we can take it to at least 500 before we move on to the next video that will be very very nice so please do that for us press on it press on it you know, currently we are still on 468. Okay, uh, let's just make it 500. It's possible. Yes, you see now it's moving. 471 is moving. Come on, guys. 472. Come on. You know, um, we can't be talking and allow our voices to be in one particular place. Let it go far. 477. Thank you. Thank you, my people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 478 now just 500 don't worry uh i'll play one more video then we start talking again four seven four eight five four eight five we are there we are almost 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 there four eight eight now just 12 to go 12 where you be where is that 12 people Come on. Yes, seven to go. Wow. Four, nine, three. Press and press and press and six to go. Four, nine, four. Four, nine, four. I appreciate every one of you, my people. Thank you very much. May God bless you all. Um, I believe we don't complete enough. Four, nine, six, four more. Four, nine, six, four, nine, six, four, nine, six. Four, nine, nine. Okay, good. 500, you see? I got God bless you now. I appreciate every one of you. Thank you very much for always putting a smile on my face. I appreciate you all my people. Thank you. Let's listen to Net Media. He just released a video a few seconds ago. Thank you very much, my people. Thank you. Yes, I don't already say already. Um... Uh, more pictures of armored personnel carriers that arrived in Nigeria through on airports in River State. If you're familiar with these armored personnel carriers, you can tell us in the comments the likely country of origin of these APCs. The paintwork shows it's headed to the Sahel region, which means it's not meant to be used in Nigeria. Anyway, it looks like France is trying to replicate the same military strategy they used in Ivory Coast in 2011. They used rebels as ground forces to capture Laurent Babo 
the former president of Ivory Coast. We will come back to this in a moment. Let's look at the latest opposition against military intervention in Niger. Russia has warned ECOWAS that any military intervention in Niger may lead to a protracted confrontation. The Russia's foreign ministry said that a military intervention in Niger will destabilize the entire Sahel region. Whether you like Russia or not, this is the whole truth. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. ECOWAS are also hitting back at Russia. They said that they will hold Russia responsible if the Wagner Group gets involved in Niger Republic. According to the ECOWAS Commissioner for Political Affairs, Peace and Security, Ambassador Abu Fatao Musa, the Wagner Group apparently is in Mali today. The Malian government says this is an agreement between them and the Russian Federation that ECOWAS will take them by their word, which means any sort of action that infringes on human rights or devastation in our region by these private military contractors. We are going to hold the other countries of our region responsible for that. All this finger pointing by the ECOWAS commissioner, why not avoid any military intervention in the first place? That will definitely bring peace to the region and there will be no need for any private military organization to intervene or even other countries. Remember that Burkina Faso and Mali already said they will help the Nigerian military to defend their country if ever they are invaded by anyone. That they will consider an invasion of Niger as an invasion of their own countries. So effectively, any military intervention in Niger, the invading forces will be fighting against three countries. Also, consider the fact that Burkina and to some extent Mali are already Russian allies. So they can effectively draw Russia into the war and of course Putin will be willing to help despite being bogged down in Ukraine. They might not send troops but will definitely send heavy equipment which will ultimately make it a protracted conflict because when you have two equally armed opponents, to make a headway will be very difficult. So in the interest of peace and stability in the region, ECOWAS should drop the idea of any military intervention because you know there is cause and effect. If someone is planning to invade a country, they won't sit around and wait to welcome the person with open arms when they invade. They will definitely defend themselves. They will seek help in doing that, so the outcome is largely unpredictable considering all the factors. This is why the scenario in Niger is quite different from Ivory Coast. Any intervention in Niger will draw in more people unlike the Ivory Coast where the rebels were already controlling some cities in northern Ivory Coast before they eventually moved down to Abidjan. So what they are planning in Niger might not be as simple as they think. As the day goes by, the pressure on France to leave Niger increases. Nigerians this time around protested at the French military base in Niamey. They are not only protesting that the French military personnel should leave Niger, they are also protesting against any military intervention by ECOWAS. Algeria is another country that is vehemently opposed to any military intervention in Niger. Would you blame them? They experienced what happened in Libya, which of course was led by France and eventual involvement of NATO. Also in Mali, down their southern border, they've all had serious security issues for several years. So Algeria will not stand by and watch Niger be invaded because war is very unpredictable. Forget about all the buzzwords, military intervention or declaration of war. All of them have the potential to veer off course. And at that point, it becomes unpredictable. No one wants instability and uncertainty around his country because it can quickly escalate and overflow into your country. Even the warmongering by Tinubu and ECOWAS is to some extent creating uncertainty in Nigeria. That's why people here in Kanu are showing their displeasure that they don't want war in Niger Republic. If you're an investor, whether a local or foreign investor, will you invest in times of uncertainty? You will definitely hold on and study the situation first before making any investment. No one wants to gamble with his money. Even if you want to open a small business or rent a stall somewhere around the city and all of a sudden riots break out, that alone will stop you from going on with the investment. 
So uncertainty is bad for business. With the likelihood of Nigeria going into recession very soon, what the government should be doing is not to make it come sooner. Instead, they are supposed to create a peaceful environment in order to attract investment, both local and foreign. There's also a rumor that Algeria is planning to supply electricity to Niger. Nigeria supplies about 70% of Niger's electricity, which they've cut off since the announcement of sanctions against Niger. It doesn't look like Algeria can supply the electricity anytime soon because there is no existing grid between Algeria and Niger. The power lines will take some time to be built between these countries, so it won't be an immediate solution to Niger's power supply problems. Meanwhile, the Chinese contractor handling the Kadanji Dam project in Niger have suspended work because of the freezing of their funds. Since the military seized power, many countries sanctioned Niger. So as a result of these economic sanctions, the Chinese contractor cannot transfer funds to Niger. The $800 million dam with a power generating capacity of 130 megawatts was initially set to be completed in 2026. The suspension of work will definitely affect the completion date, except the Nigerian government finds alternative funding or another way to move the funds without involving the banking system. Otherwise, there's no hope that work will restart there very soon, because sanctions will not be lifted while the military is still in power. Also, the completion of the crude oil pipeline from Niger to Cotonou in Benin Republic, which was initially set to be completed at the end of this year, may no longer be feasible because the Chinese contractor handling the project must heed the advice of the Chinese government to their citizens in Niger to evacuate with immediate effect. No one wants to be caught up in a war. The threat of an invasion by ECOWAS is still very much on the table. What is going on in Niger right now can be likened to what happened in Ivory Coast in 2011. Yes. When the rebels backed by France were a few kilometers into Abidjan, many people started taking evacuations seriously. More foreigners live in Ivory Coast compared to Niger, and by the time the rebels invaded Abidjan, most foreigners have either evacuated or taken refuge inside the French military base in Abidjan. The quest to capture Laurent Babo was over in a few days after French combat helicopters bombarded their main military base a few kilometers from the presidential palace. The capture of Laurent Babo effectively brought Alassane Ouattara to power, having won the contested presidential election the previous year. So this is what France might be planning to repeat in Niger. The only problem now is that they need foot soldiers like the rebels they used in Ivory Coast to capture Babo, Babo seized power in Ivory Coast and started distancing himself from France, which of course they didn't like. So Babo's refusal to accept defeat and relinquish power to Alassane Ouattara presented France the best opportunity to get back at him, and they seized the opportunity starting from their influence in the United Nations as a permanent member when the UN passed a resolution banning the use of heavy equipment between the Ivorian military and the rebels. It was France that enforced the resolution on behalf of the United Nations. Not that Babo is a saint, he was all about himself, he never considered the future of his country, that his actions might plunge the country into an unnecessary war. Just like most African politicians, they are always selfish, they think only about themselves, not the people. The surprising thing in all this is that the same man was willing to use force to remove Babo and take over turned out to be worse than Babo. Alassane Ouattara is busy today talking and planning about how to contribute Ivorian troops for the invasion of Niger to achieve a restoration of democracy. But no one planned any invasion of Ivory Coast when he committed a political coup and changed the constitution to be eligible to contest for a third term in office. The same thing he accused Babo of doing, Babo was in power for about 10 years as a civilian head of state without an election. Babo refused all entreaties by the opposition to conduct an election until he eventually accepted to hold one in 2010 after they accepted that he will be on the ballot. France and the opposition initially refused that Babo should be on the ballot in the 2010 presidential election having been in office for 10 years, which is two terms going by the French presidential system of governance, 
five years per term, unlike the US presidential system of four years per term. So looking back at what happened in Ivory Coast, Alassane Ouattara is in no position to talk about democracy. He's like a pot calling the kettle black. Many Ivorians were casualties in the conflict that brought him to power. After Babo was captured, he didn't consider all this. He didn't consider that same scenario might play out again if he succeeds in amending the constitution to be eligible to contest for third term. Why do many Africans see political offices as their birthright? Not that the coup in Niger is justified, but the most important thing is that there was no casualty compared to what happened in Ivory Coast or in Nigeria during the presidential election. It was a palace coup and so far they are in control. There is no breakdown of law and order in Niger. No urgency that requires any military intervention to help people, except for France that feels the people in power will not do their bidding and their continued stay in power might lead to their losing influence in Niger. This is understandable. Also, the United States that just finished constructing a $100 million military base in Niger, they are concerned they might lose the military base because the military regime is unpredictable. And now they have massive support in Niger, it will not be easy for the Westerners to control them. So these are the main issues. This is why they want ECOWAS to quickly intervene in Niger before the military takes drastic actions by issuing decrees that will cut off France permanently. Forget about all the posturing. France knows their servicemen will leave Niger if the Nigerian military decides to force them out. The same way France is using Alassane Ouattara to achieve a military intervention is the same way they are using Tinubu. Like Ouattara, Tinubu is not in a position to preach democracy to anyone because the election that brought him to power is still being contested in court. In fact, the military coup in Niger was more peaceful than the presidential election of February 25th, 2023. More than 70 people lost their lives. In contrast, not a single one did in Niger. So imagine the audacity of the two men who committed violent political coups in their countries telling someone who did the same thing in a peaceful manner to relinquish power. What an irony. Since they've refused to reinstate Bazoum, the former president, to power, Nigerians should be left alone to forge their political future by themselves, unless they want to make it obvious that they are working for the interest of France and the United States, against the interest of Northern Nigeria, who have many relatives in Niger. Also against the interest of Nigeria at large because we all suffer the consequences, the humanitarian crisis and the security issues if war breaks out. Just like respect, legitimacy can never be bought. It can only be earned. It's unfortunate that African leaders are working against their people's interest. What's the need for them? Other leaders, be it European, American, Asian, even Arabs will never work for the interest of foreigners. Their interest comes first before anyone else. These are people that will quickly tag the opposition as being unpatriotic when they criticize them. But there is no patriotism in any of their actions. Look at all the security challenges Nigeria faced today. No one is talking about how to solve them, but they are talking about how to invade another country. Even as they are planning this invasion, Nigerians living in Niger are begging to be evacuated. There's no plan for them. They've abandoned them to their own fate. Thanks for watching. <laughs> so, Nobu not care about anybody now. So, why is he going to create plans for Nigerians in Niger to come back home? So, these guys are doing what they're doing for their selfish interests and their supporters, their satanic supporters, are the worst thing ever because they are still supporting them on what they are doing right now. Thank you very much, my people. That is all we have for you for this second segment. So I want us to talk so we can round up on time. So I would like to uh, move on. Mr. Alex, it's good to have you on the panel. Uh, good evening to you, my brother. How are you doing today? Mr. Alex, are you there? Okay, it looks like uh, you are not available right now. So I'll go back to um, Mother Patricia. Mother Patricia, are you there? Good evening. 
Good evening, Madam Can Patricia. You hear me? Uh, yes, good I can evening. Hear you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Talk to us uh, eight minutes, please, with all that we've presented today from Fainika and did to the last video. Thank you. Okay. Good evening um, to the people on the comment session, and of course uh, to all the panelists that have uh, submitted, giving their own submission today. Thank you so so much, and of course our mommy, mother of all. Good evening. Thank you for all that you do for us. We love you. Oh uh, my God, Nigeria Wahala. It's a lot, you know, but we thank God for everything. The is it for 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 F F F F F F T? You know, I, I think uh, it's always very strange to hear somebody like him speaking from his two sides of his mouth. You know, a few days ago he said something else. How uh, they were going to squash. Uh, Squash the Nigerians as maggots. Today is a different thing altogether. These are not trusted characters. You know. They are not trusted people. Uh, who knows what is up to now that is uh, is change his mind in less than how many days? You know, but um, yeah. He lashing uh, his, uh, his master at this time is good. But the only lie he told himself is that he, he, still, he said that uh, Tinubu's uh, uh, presidency was uh, legitimate. How can that be? Everybody knows, even the baby child inside the, uh, the womb of his mother can attest to that, that uh, uh, Tinubu is an illegit illegitimate uh, president. You know, it's a selected, select president, select of Nigeria, not uh, not the ones Nigeria elected. So that's clear. So he shouldn't be deceiving himself. He should move out of that uh, uh, um, self delusion, uh, delusional stage, and come to the reality of what it is. Because Tinubu will not be there. That is very sure. He's gonna get. He's gonna be be thrown out of that place. And of course, I want to agree with the, the I think it was the, the video we watched, one of the videos where the man was talking about uh, people threatening the kind of words that was uh, used. Politicians coming out to say it will be anarchy, I mean, uh, lawyers, Hassan, and also group in Kaduna who came out. It's only God can remove uh, Tinubu. Tinubu is not above the constitution. Constitution is what makes a country. You know, with law, it's a nation built. With law, a home is built. A home without a law, without law, is chaos. So, and every law, you know, anytime the law is broken, there must be consequence to it. So, Chernobyl, uh, uh illegitimacy has consequence. So there's no need that there's no how that Tunubu will not pay for what he has uh, what he has done, and there's no no how that uh, uh, Mumu Yakubu will not pay for the for the pains that he has caused on Nigerians. There is no how. There's no how they are going to avoid it. There's no how they can escape that impending judgment that must come upon them. There is no how. So it's better they get it clear. You know, the law, anytime the law is broken, yes, then there is judgment. And that judgment will fall upon them. There's no there's no way they're going to escape from it. Tunubu is not bigger than the law. The law is what binds the nation. And therefore, everybody is subject to the law. So including the judges, if they like, let them do the wrong thing. They too, they will go in for it. It is so. So none of them, the judges, the, the law is supposed to be blind. They, you know, yeah, the judges are supposed to be blind. You know, so, so that... You know, you focus on, they don't see, they don't see, they don't supposed to see so that they don't have any emotions for anybody. They judge according to truth. What is fair, what is equitable, what is just. So if they decide that they want to dance here or there because of what they will eat or, you know, favoritism or nepotism, 
then then they wait for it. They, they will also face the dance because Nigerians don't go to take no for an answer. We are not going to accept it. Everybody knows that Peter will be won this election and that this man they've decided to impose on us. They are trying to shove it down our truth. We will never ever agree to that. It doesn't matter how long. The judges, the judge, the judiciary, you better come now with dates because you can see the avoc that only how many how many days this man has been there now. You can see all the all the all the avoc he has brought to Nigerians. And you are not you are not you are not outside. You are not outside, you live in the same country. So everything was done right there. You know how it is. So do the needful, do the right thing, because Nigerians are you know, we are almost losing patience now. We are almost, we are almost at the verge of taking taking laws into our hands, because it's not it's not about what, uh, you now. It's about Nigeria. It's about what Nigerians want. It's not about what Tinubu want and what your cronies want. It's about we. Nigeria belongs to every one of us, and we have the right to choose who we want to lead us. And we have chosen. We have found the one that will bring us to that. That place of our dreams, that place where every boy, every girl, every woman, every man in Nigeria will be able to achieve their, uh, arrive in their, in their, in their points where they will say yes, they achieve their destiny, they achieve their purpose, you know. So you, the judiciary, and Yakubu, and every professor that have rigged the election for this this man, will not stop us. You can't stop us. It's high time you people know that we. Are out for you people. So and then the lady, the lady that uh, found one uh, uh, with this seventy thousand uh, dollars and gave it back. And now they they want to. They now they gave her a a, a grant for permanent uh, resident in Canada. So what what is that supposed to mean? So my advice to that lady is that she should not take it. She should not take it. It's a trap. So are they trying to say that good things doesn't doesn't does it cannot stay in Nigeria? They don't good things doesn't exist in Nigeria. Why why how can that be how can that be something to reward somebody for? How can that be how you say you reward somebody to take to take that person out from their country and take it to Canada to do what in Canada? What is what is she going to do there? Nigeria needs her more. She needs to be the role model for Nigerians, not for Canadians. So I don't see it as a positive thing that they are granting her a permanent resident to go to Canada. I don't see it that way. I believe it's better she still be in Nigeria as the role model. Let her be going about preaching to people. Let the, let the user to do that good work in Nigeria. Let her give her a ministry in Nigeria. Let they put her into the into one of the ministries, going about talking to girls at schools, reaching out to women, and 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 uh, yeah, women they can give a woman ministry. Going to schools, different schools, to talk about loyalty and how to you know how to be, how to how to how to how to how to endure temptation, because that's a huge temptation. She she overcame it. How to keep your integrity? How to say no? You will not stay yourself. You know how to do the right thing, no matter whether who is washing you or who is not washing you. To stand and do the right thing at all times. You don't need to go to Canada. Why must they? Why must they come and, and take her from Nigeria? Why? We we need her to be role model in Nigeria. No, 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 all these are like the brain drain we are talking about. It comes in many many ways, in many shades. So what's the point? So I'm I'm angry. So yeah, that you know, uh, this is what is going on, and it's like I think many many people will be envying envying her in that regard. That so yeah, no, no, I have a different mindset. If she's my sister, or if I know, or if she's my cousin or my niece, I will tell her to stay in Nigeria. Nigeria needs her. Yes, Nigeria needs her. Any time they discover good thing coming out for them, they want to take it away. So do you mean that we don't deserve any good thing? So I'm of the opinion that we shouldn't be selling our best to them. We shouldn't be sending them away. We should encourage them to stay. Assist them to stay. We need them. 
So that is that. Then the was it a, a Daniel Brala who said African? Uh, I think yeah, everything needs a reset, you know, and there's nothing that can stop stop that. It doesn't matter what is happening now; the old system cannot hold water anymore in Africa, and Africans are waking up. Everybody wants to have a good life now. They realize that uh, the stories that we've been told and all these things, they are all lies. And I thank God for the internet. You know, it's like the enemy meant it for evil, but God turned it around for our good. You know, even at this, now, that's why they don't, they, that's why most African countries don't have lights, because they are trying to uh, keep them from, uh, from, uh, Having having information, but thank God today that there is still a way for them to charge their phones and still get the news that they need to get. Even though we still know there is a lot of work that we still need to do to sensitize the people, because as we speak, many people still do not have the right information to make an informed decision as we speak. But we are getting there, and I believe that with this new movement. Uh, sweeping across Africa, this pan pan African uh, pan pan African uh, uh, yeah, I think is 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 a movement that is going to uh, uh, um, revive everything in Africa, bring us back, you know, to that stage, that first stage that we are supposed to to be competing with world class because there's no no there's nothing that we, we can't do. Right. Yeah, so. Um, I believe that uh, this is the time and nobody should lose hope. So the judiciary do the right thing. Thank you, Mr. Evans, for the opportunity. Thank you, Thank you very much, Mother Patricia. Thanks for your submission. Uh, thank you, my people right there. Okay, let's try uh, Mr. Alex for the second time, if you're available. Okay, Mr. Alex, you're still not Yes, available. I'm available. Yes, I'm available. Okay, wonderful. Can um, you hear me? We called you earlier on. Okay, yes, I can hear you now. Thank you very much. Good evening to you. Please talk to us. Yes, I'm, I'll be battling with my signal today, as usual. Thank you, Mr. Njawash. I greet all of you on the panel. It was a comment session. I greet you. Thank you for the great work and uh, our viewers worldwide. Yes, let me continue from where my sister stopped. It is easier to tell somebody to stay in Nigeria. Um, if you were to be in Nigeria saying that to her, it would be very easy. Be, living abroad and telling somebody to stay in Nigeria, in, I, I, know, I know where you're coming from. Uh, it would have been easier if you were in Nigeria, telling somebody to stay in Nigeria, she would listen to you. So it's a, it's a, it's a contradiction there. It's not easy, trust me. I'm not saying I'm not a gas brain drain. I'm not saying I'm not aware of uh, the transatlantic modern way of um, slavery and taking of the best brains. But I can't blame the young lady if she jumps at the offer. Osama Bin Laden was in America, trained, brought up in America. So he did what he did to, to, to America. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not supporting that. So people can see, go abroad and come back. And, and, and be more useful back home. So I cannot say she should stay back home. She should go there, look, acquire knowledge, acquire skills, work, save monies, come back home and impact on your generation. So that's my take on that. And she's a good example. She has become a role model and yeah, good in space. Um, you know, we, we have to learn some virtues. We, yes, we, we lash out at, at our leaders every day, because they, they are really satanic and evil, but we also have work to do on ourselves. Yes, we need to have a soul searching, uh, sober reflection. Uh, and then um, our mentality, our mindset needs, I, I know there is a, a trickle down syndrome from leadership. It has affected people emotionally, psych psychologically, and so on. It's not easy when the head is rotting for the body to be different. 
So we we got job to do, like you said, madam, that we still have a lot to do. Thank God for the internet. So I I will I, I will advise that lady to go, go to Canada, go back to school, learn whatever you can learn, acquire a degree, work, help your family, save up, come back home at some point. Nigeria indeed will need you. But for now, go because everything that happened now is like destiny. It was not she never applied for it. She's not desperate to leave. She was just uh, if she was desperate, seventy thousand dollars can can take away ten people from Nigeria with 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 ease through tourist application visa. So that shows she wasn't desperate. So I would advise her to keep the good character even even as she goes, because I know ninety nine point nine percent assurance that she's going to leave. At least uh, she should be exposed. Traveling is part of education. And uh, as for Fanny Kayode, for me, uh, I don't believe in political rolling stones, political unstable waters and political unstable elements, political madibula walkabouts, political, you know, loquacious and laughing jackass. I don't believe in people who step one and impromptu just switch um, their lights from different colors. So I say Kabutu rejected to him and his entire assertions and postulations. So we should be focused, all eyes on judiciary, give us the date of the judgment, give the judgment, we are eager. And I want to talk about the war in Niger, the, I mean, the war, the coming, the raging war, the, 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 the I mean, the, the war that's coming, no? the war that the Nigerian government led by the, the mandate criminal, the, the Professor Mahmoud Ainek selected president. You see, when you throw stones in the market, <laughs> a lot of times it ends up on your relatives' edge. And your, and your relatives, your mother, your siblings, now they are bleeding. Mahmoud, uh, he, he will have families and relatives in Niger. The man they brought, the Nutanas are all crying now. Yes, we all are crying in the, in the whole country. But trust me, those on the boundaries are crying more. Trust me, this war can happen and, and it, will not, it, will, it will not even show in Lagos. It will show in Benin. In 1967, life was still going on when the war was raging in some parts of the eastern country, eastern part of the country, and some parts of the south-south. But life was still going on in some parts of the country. So now you succeeded in rigging elections, collecting millions of dollars, hundreds of millions, and not seeing a fraudulent man in the middle of the night we can see president, fraudulent president. So now high market, your brothers are crying in Yola. Your brothers are crying in, in, in Bronu. Your brothers are crying in Sokoto, in all boundary states, cities and towns, villages with, with Niger Republic. So Professor Mahmoud, I'm sure you are receiving the backlashes now. You are seeing that evil is not good. It's good to be good. If, the, if this, was a different scenario that will be actually the president. America will not dare do what they are doing. France will not dare do what they are doing. There are people you see, you just don't, you just can't. For example, there are people that will be on the platform. Some people can't just come out. So come and tell us about APC, they know. You can't hear that uh, Madame Rita, Mr. Alex, or Black Panther, or Irish Finest, or some people, that's people, you will just feel like, okay, I'll wait until next month. If you observe, so people don't come when these names I mentioned are on this platform. They don't come with their APC lies. They just come when they know that there are some gentle people who are also vocal, but they are just gentle. Some of us are not so gentle with the truth. We want to splash it on your body. We want to rub it. We want to force it down your throat with respect, though. So the point is this. Professor Mahmoud, you have succeeded in using your hands to bring war to your own people. We will talk. And as I watch, we always say, I can control people on my platform, but I cannot control people outside my platform. So we will talk. We will do what we can do. But if the devil in Asorok is head bent on allegedly collecting money from France and Washington to do what he wants to do, he will do it. That's the characters of drug barons. They don't care about who is crying. They don't care about who is spying. They don't care about this, the consequences. They know. Drugs, um, drug charges in some countries is death penalty. 
They know drug sentence in some countries is public execution. They know uh, drug drug charges, drug penalties in some countries is life life imprisonment. They know that drug um, drug activities is dangerous, but they still do it anyways. They become kingpin, um, barons. The same character is playing up now. It's all about the money France wants to pay. It's all about the money America wants to pay. So long as I get the money, I don't care who loses their lives. I don't care which villages are bumped down. I don't care how many people are going to lose relatives. I don't care who, who is who that is going to be affected on, on the other side of Nigeria. So this is what you get when you don't have leadership with compassion. Leadership with people with historical knowledge and humanity. Leadership of, of, of you know, rascals and nitwits, miscrants, agberos in our local language. People who turn Lagos into an agbero city. See, today, it's still there as a, uh, as a life testament stigma. And this is the man that you gave the reins of power. And look at the people he surrounded himself with. Former criminals, present criminals, and future criminals. So I, I, I'm just, uh, I, I, I'm, I, I'm not happy. I'm not calling for the war, but you cannot fight NATO. You, who knows what is crying out to God? Who knows who, what is coming? When he was busy rigging elections, stealing the mandate, switch, switching of beavers, they thought they were doing Peter Obi. They thought they were doing us in Ajawash. They thought they were doing the obedient movement. They thought they were punishing the Easterners. They thought they were punishing the Igbos. They thought they were squashing Biafra. They thought they were punishing Abdekanu. But today, the stone that was thrown at the Easterners, at the Southerners, at the obedient movement has landed on their fellow Fulanese. Most of them, not all. So my sympathy to those who are, who are going to be at the receiving end, who are going to be most hit with this crisis. It should be a lesson to us. We should not miss pleasure with business. There is time for everything. We should not play with the lives of people. Now it has backfired. It has backfired. Guess what? First of all, I want to thank people, all the charity, because I'm hearing allegedly that traditional rulers, they, they are organizing themselves, community leaders are organizing themselves, especially in the South South and some parts of South East, but mostly in the South South. I want to thank all the royal fathers. You are indeed your children and your wives, and you, you are listening to us in Nigeria and other platforms. I heard that they are already, you know, fortifying and uh, also preparing to defend their communities and villages and towns. They are not waiting for government anymore. Everybody is making arrangements, going back to the old ways. People are, you know, you know, uh, having meetings, emergency meetings. I thank all the Enogis. I thank uh, the Otaro of Aunchi. I thank the great Oba of Bini. I thank the Olu of Wari. I thank the Enoji of Urumi. I thank all of them, all uh, Jaja for Pobo, I thank you. I thank the Iasera of Ologbo. Uh, we are hearing everything. The vigilant, even the Edo State Governor just now, I also thank him because I heard he has just finished training 3,500 Edo people to be inscripted into the vigilante. I heard he has started paying you know, attention to security vis-a-vis -vis the war regime in Niger and Nigerian border. So I thank everybody. This is what we are saying. Our voice is hitting everywhere. If they are not listening, their children are listening. If their children are not listening, their grandchildren are listening. If their grandchildren are not listening, their wives are listening. Their drivers are listening. Their friends are listening. So never you think nobody is hearing you. People are listening. When you see Nigeria Watch programs, you see 5,000 views, 16,000 views, 35,000 views. Who do you think are those viewers? They are not animals. These are permanent people. These are fellow citizens. These are stakeholders. These are people who are royal fathers. People who, who care for humanity. People are already, you know, you know, arranging. They are setting things in order. Away with the government of lies and fraud. People are realizing their mistakes too. People who rig elections for APC. Everybody is crying. If the if bomb is coming, the bomb cannot differentiate APC and PDP. The bomb will land where it wants to land. So I'm happy now our royal fathers are waking up and they are really setting things in order. They are meeting, they are communicating. They are, they, are, they are trying to, you know, um, fortify the, the different territories where they are ruling over. This is what we, we want to see, leadership by examples. So, Nigeria, thank you for your program. I mean, it's going far and wide. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. I want to thank especially the, the, the vigilante head in Amagba. I, I'm saying everything. Thank you, all of you, and neighboring communities. Thank you. Thank you for the recent unity 
Hunger has united us now. The price of fuel has brought us together. The prices of things in the market has brought us together. Nobody care about PDP and APC and Labour anymore. We all care about give us our mandate. Give us our mandate. We all care not to. Now we can know that we are all human beings. So um, when something wants to happen, it will not look for the tribe. It will not look for the party. It will not ask for your ID card. It will happen. So I'm, I'm very glad. Um, this is what is happening now. This is a situation report that I'm hearing. And I can verify them. But since we are on the platform, I can say allegedly. And I'm very happy with this. You know, if I'm not happy, I will also say it. And I will also blast. So with what I'm saying, I'm, I'm not a demon to see a good thing. And, and I will not commend it. It's not only uh, checkmating, checkmating, blasting, blasting. When you see good things, praise people. As I tell you, people are listening. People are watching. And I thank you all. We have to defend our land. If some miscreants, some useless people, some money mongers, some war mongers, if they want to go and use their children to fight in the Jedi Republic, they should go and do it. If, if some sold out governors, if they want to fight, join the to fight, they should carry their family members and go and do it. Every, everybody is wise now. If some senators want to also join them, they should go with their children and go and do it. They should withdraw, Eru Fai should withdraw his children from, from uh, UK. He said the Boko Haram book is a book is a crime in Islam, but your children are in the Western world. You are creating a marjorie and, uh, uh, and sponsoring banditry, but your children are in the Western world. Who is fooling who? Withdraw your children and go and fight in 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 the uh, Niger Republic. Lead the battle line. Uh, I want Tunubu and his family. Remy Tunubu, go and lead the battle line. I want uh, the vice president Shetima go and fight Niger. Go. We we are we are tired of. The way Nigeria is. If the country cannot work, if Obi can't get his mandate, let the country be broken into pieces. In fact, the breaking up has started already. The only thing that is delaying it is just the court judgment. Trust me, you are going to be amazed at the way the walls of this country are going to fall down. People are going to tell you, we know that we are from the ancient Bene kingdom. We know we are from the uh, from the Opobo kingdom. We know we are from the or your or old or your or your empire. People will remind you that they they see how everything intact. We're just playing to the civilization thing. We are one country. But since you, you want to stay somewhere and enjoy, take your children abroad and continue to be and behave like animals back home as leaders, we say Kabuturi Jetameta. On this note, I leave it here. This is my humble Logomaki. And, and as usual, my Logomaki, I live here with Alugua Pacha. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alex. God bless you, my brother. Thank you for always saying it. It is. Um, yes, uh, we agree with you on the last statement that the only thing that is keeping everybody together right now is because we are waiting for the court judgment that's just the truth that's the only thing that's making nigerian silent now the only thing that is making nigeria quiet um for any reason like i've said before it's not a threat for any reason the judiciary do otherwise uh, anyway let me pick this call Good evening to you, madam. Thanks for calling in. Good evening to you. Please talk to us. Hello. Can Thank you hear me? We can hear you, madam. Thank you very much for calling in. Talk to okay. us. Okay. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. This is Bernice speaking. Um, first of all, I want to greet you. Thank you, Mr. Elvis, for the good work. I mean, your platform has really stabilized my mental health, and I believe it applies to a lot of people, too. So we've been, I've been following your program backstage and on the comment section. So I just came across somebody, very notable person from Nigeria today. I picked from the airport and uh, he told me some things that were a little, not, I won't say it's concerning, but I was just a bit amazed. First of all, he said that the judges have, uh, actually concluded if he's from the president i don't want to mention him and i will use allegedly too because i'm on the i'm on the platform mm -hmm. he said that um the judges have concluded and the whole evidence point that peter will be won and also tunubu is they are going to disqualify him is going to be disqualified but the problem why this judgment is delaying is that the um, APC, they are trying to negotiate for a re-election. They initially talked of a rerun, but it's like the people didn't, didn't go with that. I mean, they 
Nigerian people. So now they are trying to suggest uh, or negotiate for a re-election just to really cancel the whole election and, start with INS and say there should be another election. So, hmm. but you say that is not going to work. But as for Tunubu, it is a done that he is going to be disqualified. Okay. Then he said that um, during Buhari time, Buhari was paying the Alamajiris and the poor people in the north 5,000 5, naira every month. And that when Tunubu, Tunubu came, he stopped it. I was trying to say he would do 8,000 for just 12 million homes that may not even include much of the Northern people. So he's going against a lot of what the North wants. So the Northern elite, they are even highly angry with him and the revolution that is going to happen, should he attempt to go for this media war, we start from the North. So I just say, let me bring that in. Thank Allegedly, you. let me put it that way, but it's a, information I got from a very reliable source from the presidency that flew into the state, state of Maryland today. Thank you. Thank so you. So I want to thank everybody, thank the panelists, Alex, Omoye, Rita, you especially, your family, Madam Patricia, everybody, Mr. Stiem, all I appreciate you all. Thank and you I so love much. everybody. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you very much, Madam Benis Peter. Say God bless you. Thank you. All right. Uh, you see that information. Yes, mm. Madam. No, I wanted to, if I can also just chip in for that information when it comes. We are not okay. going to any. I want to thank the lady as well for you know coming up with uh, giving us that inside the uh, inside the uh, uh, information. But also, I want the judges to know that we are not going to have any re-election. Any, any, no rerun, no re-election. Uh, the, this, the what we need is they must give Mr. Peter Obi the is a is a mandate, and then let them put Mr. Peter Obi there. Then change the constitution. That constitution, if Nigeria will ever be, we must address that matter of that constitution. Without that constitution being changed, we are not going to any election again. We are not going with that right. fraudulent constitution. Yes, yeah, thank you. All right. In terms of constitution, nothing can change in constitution if the number one seat, the right person is not there. So when we are talking, it's like we're running more than a shadow. I've said that so many times. Constitution, nothing will touch constitution with these satanic people that is ruling us. Let's get the number one seat right now. Everything else must be on hold right now until the right person is on number one seat. Every other thing will follow. But for anybody to come in, for example, the way some people are saying, oh, let them share Nigeria, let them divide Nigeria, let them do this, on that which person. So those things can't work. We all should just have that in mind. If you can't get the number one seat right, Nigeria will continue to get worse forever. That's just it. You know, let me pick this call. Hello, thank you very much, love of God. You're calling back again. You have only one minute. Please go straight to the point, madam. That is me again, oh. One minute you ah, have, please. I better go sit up and not talk about constitution. Leave her now. Make our mind enter. When he enter, go they do what we want to. Make everybody make my back end. Because those who went that side, they no one hear that thing because of what they get from our side. Leave her. We know we know it's say we want that thing to change. But make our mind enter. You know, say that play for our day. Then we Thank cannot you. know I wanted to change that one way you talk. So for now, everybody more could they look like we will not be mumu. God bless you. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Let's focus on the, why we are here. Our continuous, daily, repetitive topic. Sometimes, in fact, most times it's boring. But you don't have no choice than to just do it. You understand? You don't have no choice. Just like somebody that is eating a bar every day. Every day, seven days a week, 365 days in a year, you are eating eba, eba, morning, afternoon, evening, morning, afternoon, evening, morning, because you don't have no choice to eat another food. That's the order that they've got. That's the situation we find ourselves right now. Sometimes when I'm telling people it's not funny to be coming out every day with the same topic. Some people think that, oh, it's fun. We are happy doing what we are doing. You must be, you must have problem for you to think this is fun. Nothing is fun here. Nothing is fun here for me to be saying judiciary did the right thing. Judiciary did the right thing. But it concerned me concerned judiciary before. It's not because of this whole election thing. 
you know so for me i'm looking forward for this working out by god's grace i know it's going to work out that information that came in right now i already have a clue of many but because of my position i don't like to talk about so many things on air um but it's good when it comes from you guys yeah that's fine but i just told you guys you know that we should look out for a judgment next week between tuesday and wednesday fingers crossed you know something might happen so yeah fingers crossed anyhow it wants to happen anytime it wants to happen let it happen let peter Obi be declared the, Fed, uh, the, the the president of the federal republic of nigeria that is my stand and that is why i'm here and i'm privileged i'm grateful and blessed that i have a platform where i can put my family together and we all can talk and our voices are going far like i said before you know you'll be surprised the people that is listening to you in fact you'll be surprised when you know the people that is looking off look looking up to 6 p.m for us to come here four days ago i didn't come on time i think i started by 7 p.m somebody who called me saying that I, I, Nigeria was was uh, uh, mr evis what's wrong with you are you not coming out to that are you okay I said i'm okay I said because i know you're in nigeria i hope everything is fine with you and all that blah 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 so to call it short there so these people are not just coming to hear from me they are they are looking for what they want to hear from you if you know you're part of the people joining the panel, they want to hear from you. Sometimes some of them do mention your names. Some of them agree with you sometimes. Some of them also disagree with you. They mention your name to me. Say, ah, this woman, you know, what did she talk to? They're not just agree with her at all. Why sometimes, oh, ah, that woman, ah, she's my best speaker or that man. This is it. Sometimes when you are speaking, that's what I'm saying all the time. Listen to yourself because people are listening to you. So you listen to yourself so that you can say the right thing. For any reason you make mistake during time of your delivery, you can amend it straight away within a few seconds. You know, don't think you are on, you are on air. You are on air right now. So you, we, we are talking, we got to listen to ourselves, our conscious ourselves, and all the kind of things that we say. All of them are listening. That's why some things we don't need to talk about at all. Because no other option. The only option we have right now is to declare it. I'll be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He won the election for Christ's sake. He won it. He won the election, 2023 uh, presidential election, which happened on the 25th of February this year. Mr. Peter Gregory Obi won it. Thank you very much, my people. Madarita, thanks for joining us on the panel. Uh, good evening to you. Please talk to us. Yeah, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Elvis and um my brothers and sisters in the um, panel, Mommy Diaspora, and those watching from home. <clears throat> I'm sorry I'm um, kind of like late today, but um, I didn't start early. But I think based on what everyone was talking about, I think we talked about um, FFK. I just want to address one thing first. Uh, Madam Patricia, Princess Patricia, good afternoon, ma. You said something about uh, the woman who collected the uh, uh, $70,000 and uh, she was giving a permanent residency to Canada that she should reject it. I would disagree because if you're telling a woman to reject coming to a place where there is sanity, it will be unfair for you to say that while you are outside the shores of Nigeria. Because as of today, even Mr. Elvis talks about it, how difficult it is to live in Nigeria today. The quality of life of every single Nigerian today is, is below $1. In fact, I think the animals in the forest even live a better life because they have access to water, everything, sunlight, food is, is, is free, it's in the forest and it's even free. But in Nigeria where you ought to even have things that are free, you don't even get it because it's controlled by evil, malevolent set of human beings. In fact, they're not even human beings. So, you know, it would be unfair to say the woman should come. Whatever it is that would better her life and the life of her family, I urge that woman, wherever she is, go for it. If you feel the need to serve your country, Nigeria, your primary country, Nigeria, go for it. But whatever it is that would uplift you as a person first and as a woman, especially being in a patriarchal society like Nigeria, if, you've going, if you want you to go to a place that you need to improve and uplift yourself as a woman, go for it. 
if you need to up, to improve your family one way or the other or your community, go for it. If you need to come back to Nigeria after learning the good things from the diaspora, go for it. Let Don't allow anybody to tell you that, oh, you shouldn't, um, uh, without due respect to you, Mrs. Madam Patricia, you know, that they shouldn't take the permanent residency or, I mean, you take everything. Even that $10,000 is nothing, is nothing if you convert it to Naira today. It's nothing for that woman. She, it's not sustainable. So, you know, whatever it is, the woman she needs to do to improve her life, man, she should go for it too. And um, Mr. Nanja, what is something that you said, you know, I, I laughed, but it was not really funny. When you mentioned the word eba, in fact, you mentioned it in Bini accent, eba, somebody eating eba every day. It's, it's, it's like you go into an, a, a cassava coma, sort of, eating eba every day. It is not fun. What you're doing every day, it's really and truly, it's not fun. Our vice president, Amedati, said it when he was telling him, she said, do you, do you think coming here every day and talking, you think it's fun? You think he's having fun? You can imagine you think Peter Obi is having fun? You think uh, the, the, the chairman of the uh, Labour Party is having fun? Even the lawyers, they need time for themselves too. No one is having fun. But it's a call to service. It's a call to service to your nation. Mr. Elvis, you have other options. But the spirit of Nigeria is within your heart. And that is why you dedicate every day to come out and speak every day. Everyone cannot be like you. And that's why you are the only one that I, in fact, you are the only one. Somebody should, somebody can question me or, 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 or go against me to say, he's not, he, I mean, he's not the only one that comes every single day for his over 365 days. He's been coming to, coming on air, sacrificing a lot to, to support Peter the Rock Obi to support the Nigerian project. So it is not easy, but it is a call to service. For you to come out every day, I commend you. I don't take you for granted. God bless you. And God bless your family for tolerating you sacrificing to come out here every single day. And those people who come out to also listen. And those people who come out to talk in the panel, God bless all of you. But Mr. Nigeria Watch, you are the lion of social justice. That's your new name for me. Oh. Mr. Elvis is the lion of social justice period uncontestable no counterfeit now ffk thank you, thank you. ffk i know you i don't know i i didn't watch the video about ffk uh but um i think based on what people were saying i think he's um he's blabbing his mouth again kind of uh, based on what i'm seeing on the screen he's attacking to but listen ffk is okay let me tell you let me let me tell you about him you know okay, go uh, ahead as as you know um last week about a week plus ago that was the article i just put on the screen right now we talk yeah. about it here but i believe you were on holiday that time you know when he left this you know so he said we will cross you like mango under our feet fanica you they once burkina faso mali niger army that uh this article his statement was very very disgusting uh annoying and it can trigger war at any time so less than two weeks now, and he came back again, uh, not attacking Tinubu that, you know, we, we took bullet for Tinubu, we, we took insult for Tinubu, we put our family and everything at risk and all that. So Tinubu cannot dare and all that to go for war. And because uh, the, the France and all that want to use him, you know, for their own selfish interest and blah, 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 and all that. So that's what I was saying. So the surprising part of all this is that how come, where, where's the change coming from within a week or two, you know, after you said that Nigeria is, regardless of our current situation in Nigeria, Nigeria can still crush them, crush Niger like never before. But now, you are not attacking Tinobu and all that. So we don't know where this is coming from. Remember, uh, Erofi uh, rejected the ministerial role the other day. And he also said today, Erofi said today again now that he's too big to work under Tinubu and he's too big for him to be under anybody as a godfather. So the question is, do you guys think now that uh, um, FFK, you know, he's, he's, he's always talking from both sides, of, <laughs> both sides of his mouth. Maybe I've moved to Aerofine, who knows? Go ahead, mother. Thank you very much. Um, I will use the word allegedly now before I need to say what I need to say about um, FFK. I think give us a mother he used to call him for food. <laughs> but I call him the um the white the woman beater. 
but it has it has been alleged several times that FFK has a penchant for hard drugs, narcotics. So um, at this point, um, I think we need a reevaluation of his mental capacity. I don't think he's mentally sound. And um, if you ask me, because um, he's been swinging like a pendulum on you know different sides up down in fact as a matter of fact he's just floating like a you know when you put a, a feather on, on a pond and he just floats aimlessly you don't know which direction to go so i would liken that to the brain of ffk and this is not with all due respect because the, his character you know his in, instability of his mindset it, it shows it so that's why i'm saying at this point just like so many other um Nigerian pundits, we were in the political scene, you know, their mental capacity needs to be re-evaluated re because a lot of them are, are not normal. And that is a fact. It's not funny, but it's a fact. Now, this man clearly is unstable mentally, very, very unstable. And this, uh, as a matter of fact, you, you know, when you make such a statement and, said you, and, and say, you know, uh, Mali, we can crush them like blah, 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 just like the overfed orangutan. You know, we have a government where that allows this rascality. Let me use the words of my president, Peter Obi, that allows this rascality. So that's why, and then we now have the media who are feeding into this rascality as well. And so when you see someone like him making such statements, tomorrow we have the overfed orangutan, Asari, come out and talk like that. Nobody touches them, they're untouchable. So therefore, you are giving, you are opening the gates of um, the, 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 the mentally unstable people, you know, like, like this one, FFK, you know, to come out and, you know, make such a nebulous statement and just say it with all sense of, um, in fact, Nigeria Watch, the words that I want to say is not, is not good for, for your media. So let me just be, but really, actually, they really need to check the mental stability of FFK. You know, he's not normal. So anything that comes out of his buccal cavity is, is blackguard as rubbish, is, is as good as does been a rotting tomato, as far as I'm concerned. So um, people like him are what I'll call merchants of political bestiality. You know, it, 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 we, we find them all over. There's no difference between MC Oluomo and this uh, FFK. The fact that he went to Harvard and MC Oluomo did not go to Harvard, they're in the same, they're the same boat. They have no character. They have no character. So that's why even if you go to the best school in the world, or you have all the money in the world and your character is as thinking as Lucifer himself, you are nothing. In fact, you wasted your time, you wasted your resources, you wasted your energy, you know, to even go to school. You, in fact, that's why sometimes you see some people who didn't go to school, but they have character. They are able to um, um, give solutions to problems. They are able to mediate, mediate between issues or conflicts. Conflict resolution is a gift, you know, as, and then, Someone like this now, you know, with all the books and everything, just take a look at Yakubu now. That call himself professor. In fact, the entire professors, common coalition result, they found it difficult to do subtraction and addition. Then what are we talking about here? Really and truly, what are we talking about here? So I'm not even going to talk much. It's just a matter of political bestiality, FFK, just like the rest of them, you know, and then... Um, there's something that uh, Mr. My, my brother, Sir Alex, was talking about uh, Governor Basaki recruiting 3,000 vigilante, you know, and it's kind of like praising him. Listen, are we not tired of, I'm trying to, are, are we not tired of this romancing of our egos? Are we not tired of it? Are we not tired of this um, constituted authority, privileged men and women? in the corridors of power. Are we not tired of them romancing our ego in this 21st century, this day and time of social media, of the internet, of education and exposure? Are we not tired of being rom romanced, our ego being romanced by these characters? So just because he recruited 3,000, hello? What happened to the... Are, 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 are you going to tell the, the lady who called from, I don't know, it's Canada or somewhere in Europe that thought about her grandmother being, you know, um, and taken down? By, 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 by the men that came from Mali or from the north. What happened there? There was no visitation, there was nothing. Amongst other people who have reported. And then even as a, as a time, these so-called vigilantes in Edo State were complaining. And then now he just recruited, like, I'm going by Mr. my brother Alex's words, though, and he said he wanted to thank him. For what? 
Thank you. I was just, Madam Rita, yes. Uh, Madam Rita, you, you are right. I was just mentioning it along everything I'm hearing in that direction. Yeah, anyways. But please, let us not come to this. Amarene. Election is good. Stop allowing your ego to be romance, my people. Nigerians, stop allowing. Stop it. Stop it. If it's an addiction, start unlearning it. Stop allowing what these people are doing to romance your ego so that you end up praising them and you not be like an hallelujah boy or girl. Stop it. Stop it. Election is coming now. They'll start fixing roads. They'll start recruiting people. What happened to what, what happened in the past three or four years ago? Are you going to just push that aside and just go with the flow now? Is All it right. a black thing? Is, is, it, is it something that it has now become a norm? Can't we unlearn certain things? It's my brother Alex, I'm not jiving at you. I'm talking generally. That is why I can never, and I've repeated it, and I will say it anywhere I go in this world. I can never ever praise any constituted authority for the job that they ought to be doing. People use the word... I know sometimes my brother, Mr. El Elvis, you say, you know what to use, what to encourage them. No. Why should they be encouraged? Do you know what it is to be a leader? Why do you want to be a governor? Somebody said yesterday, I don't know if it's my sister Omoye or um, 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 Irene Finest, that said, you know, um, anybody that's, um, that is under considered authority, they're actually, you should, you should have that um, spirit of service, to serve, like a servant, to serve. Yes. Serving me to to humble yourself. You are willing to take anything because you want to serve. You're not pleasing anybody, but you want to serve people. So people that you are serving, they can't be praising you because you, you have the, all the taxes. You have all the constituted authority. You are in control of the, the House of Assembly. So why should I be praising you? You're supposed to be serving me. So anytime I complain of your ineptness, you should listen and you should act on it. You should follow up. That's, listen, listen, there's so many ingredients of leadership right. out loud. Mr. Nigel, what's up? Please give me time. This is education. We, we should stop allowing ourselves to, to allow people to romance our ego. Please, 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 I beg, I beg. I, you know, let, let me stop here. I want to talk about this uh, Putin thing, but let me stop here. Thank I'll, you. I'll come back. I'll come back. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, before I pick this call, I just wanted to quickly correct uh, your statements when you said I. I I said on this platform that we should be encouraged. I've never said anything like that. I said we cannot insult them. Why should we encourage people that were constituted, uh, constitutionally elected into power? No, we can't insult them. That's my stand. Not encourage who? Are they babies to encourage them? You know, I only said um, we can't insult them. We can't disrespect them. That's on my platform. Anybody can do that off my platform, but not here. But encouraging them is a no, no, no for me. Good evening to you. Please, you have so much noise on your Thank end. You. What's your name and where are you calling us from? Hello? Hello? Yeah, good evening to you. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, yes, my name is Joseph Wasser. I'm calling from Houston, Texas. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. Thanks and for calling in. You have two minutes. Talk to us, sir. Yes, I wanted to talk to talk about the commentary uh, delivered by this young lady that spoke about FFK. Uh, sir, the, the problem how you, with him is sir, that excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. The word "young lady" is not nice. How, you do okay, you know her personally? Sorry, my dear. Sorry, my dear. I was asleep. Sorry, a lady. Okay, go ahead. The lady that got that spoke. Sorry about that. Yeah. Lady, lady. I'm sorry. My apologies. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, SFK sir. is a disgruntled person who was not nominated for ministerial positions. And then his voice fellows saying, you know, you can tell from his voice the way he's been he attacked Tunumbu that he took blood for him and risked his family and all that. He's disgruntled. And besides, he's a man that talks from like three words, three corners of her mouth, of his mouth, sorry. He's a disgrace. He's not a reliable person. Uh -huh. I said he's a disgrace. It is a disgrace. You see, so the sunshine, you start enjoying the sun, and it's cold, you, you, know, you turn around and start criticizing the sun. It is a disgrace. Uh, but as far as the... I had some people talking about uh, Peter B being nominated for this. It's a lot more involved than what we are seeing on the periphery. 
the Western uh, governments, uh, they, they, they influenced the election. And that is what we generated the impunity that is playing out today. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, they, uh, come in. So thank you. Please round up. You have only two minutes. Okay. The impunity, somebody generated the war in uh, Niger, and now uh, they are trying to play out their plans to mess up everything there to support France and the United States in Niger. Sorry. Okay. I'm glad. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. You. Thank you very much, sir, for calling in. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, I think um, I should quickly take this article right here. You know, there's a um, there's also the other breaking news going on right now, but I don't I don't know I don't know I cannot really confirm this. I'm trying to get it from more other um, platforms. Maybe from tomorrow we we're going to see more of it. But meanwhile, I'd like to quickly uh, let's take this together. As you can see right there, um, we are getting requests to overthrow Tinubu Nigerian military. Mm -hmm. So the Nigerian military, uh, currently speaking, I don't know. Uh, according to this article right here, uh, although I've used this article before, it's a, it's a mainstream article, you know, but let's see. Uh, this was published today. Say so the Nigerian Defense Headquarters, DHQ, has confirmed receiving requests from unnamed persons to overthrow Bola Tenable administration amid the ongoing political standoff in Nigeria Republic, where the military recently removed the country's a uh, democratically elected president uh, Bazo. The DH the DHQ suggests that a uh, proponent of the coup uh, detat uh, bearing the cause alleged poor welfare within the armed forces. The director of defense information uh, uh, brigadier general Tuku Gosau confirmed this in a statement released via the DHQ official Twitter account. Okay, if it's the official Twitter account, that's fine then. The military frowned on the call for military intervention in the nation's democracy, Label, labeling such as unpatriotic and wicked and an attempt to divert the focus of the armed forces from their constitutional duties while acknowledging the significance of ensuring the welfare of its personnel the leadership of the dhq said it remains resolute in the safeguard in the principles of democracy in nigeria we are detest any attempt by the any individual or group to instigate the law abiding armed forces of the nigeria to embark on any unconstitutional change of government in our country we wish to state unequivocally that the military is happy and better under democracy and will not get involved in any act to sabotage the hard end democracy in our country. Okay. Uh, let me finish this one. Unquote. The AFN under the leadership of the Chief of Defense Staff General CJ Musa is determined to ensure complete sabo. A subordination of the armed forces to constitutional authority under His Excellency President Bola Tinubu and will not be distracted from its role that are uh, were defined in the 1999 constitution as amended, said Gasu. On July, okay, blah blah blah. I'll, okay, all right, I'll stop that right there. But I don't know what this means, what they are trying to talk about. You know, but meanwhile, I would like us to, you know, add it to whatever submission that we're going to have uh, now. But nevertheless, whatever secrecy that is going on or closed door meetings that these all people are having right now, all will come to the public shortly. Very, very soon, all will come to the public. Let me call on Madam Ame. Thank you very much for joining us, Madam. Uh, good evening to you. I'd like you to talk to us. Madam Ame, are you there? Okay, you are not there. Uh, I will just move on. You know, let me see. Madam Busy Braze, are you there? We've called you so many times today. You've not responded. Oh, oh God, Elvis, I am really, really sorry. I had an impromptu 
that I took, I ran out not knowing it was going to take me longer than you know. I'm okay, so sorry. Okay, that's fine. Please. But are you available to speak now? I I am. I am. Okay. I thank am. you very much, Pana. Please talk to us. This topic that you've just read here caught my eye. Um, you see, <laughs> Nigeria is currently a volcano. You know, yesterday I made a submission and I was saying if our brothers and sisters in the north wake up to the realities that it is the so-called demonic elites that are using religious and tribal bigotry to separate us so that they can continue with their looting and, and destroying our livelihood will be better for it. And there seem to be an uprising. What? There is every, you see, the Bible says all things work out for good for those that trust the, the Lord. All that they have done, they have, God is using it to an advantage because the only way that these people's eyes will open is when they feel the woto woto seriously because they are beginning to feel it. There's an uprising already in Kanu. And you know, the northern youths, when they, when they start their own, uh, what is the word now? When they go out to do their own protest, it can go any way. It is not, it is, it is totally organic and very united in purpose. So it is the elite I'm even afraid of. I'm, I'm afraid for. Because right now, who is going to be their enemy? Before they will use religion, then they will go and be killing Christians. They will go and be killing people that are not of their own ethnic group. Now, what is the reason why, what, why would they, what, what is the purpose? It is not religion that is taking them on the street. It is not a, a tribal bigotry that will be taking them on the street. It is the leadership that will take them on the street. And once they go on the street, who will be their victim? So let us watch this space. All these so-called elites, they will be looking for a hole to hide. They'll be flying all those their jets out of the country. Let us keep watch. Because the hole that they are hiding, there is fire in that hole that is going to pull them, drive them out. A lot of the people in the military are not happy. They, they rank and fire. They are desperately not happy. A lot of them are living in miserable situations, miserable conditions. They are not taken care of. In fact, they, some of them have been court martialed. They give them percentage of their earnings. Can you imagine? They give them a percentage and then they go and claim, the orgas will claim they've made payments. On one occasion, one of the, them complained. The person was court martialed. So amongst the military, there is so much discontent. And then now they are putting them in the front line to go and be slaughtered. ECOWAS is saying that they are putting 25,000 army, military men and men in front. Who is going to be majority of that 25? It's not the fellow Nigerians that have been impoverished to go and fight a war of a drug pusher that does not know whether what, 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 the, 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 the height of incompetency you see, it is just unfortunate that this drug dealer, his palm was so useless that he bore useless children. And the wife that is, well, I doubt it if they even see, if they even see each other at night. That one, she might even be even worse than him from her de demeanor and from what we've heard and seen of her so far. She's not a, 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 a woman with a good heart. She's one that will hold the light for people to be beheaded. That person called Remy Tinubu, Han, the husband, only God knows who is even who is better among, none of them is better. 
these people are supposed to call this man and counsel him and say, look, this is what we know. This is the situation, what, we, what you've done. We understand we need to get our, our get out clause. He said his son is there busy uh, doing first, first, first son office, rolling out uh, 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 organizations that is going to employ youths. What token, tokenistic action is that? They think they will buy us with such useless acts of stupidity. They are commandeering that position for, the fa for their family. Military, better wake up. Wake up. If the judiciary do not do the right thing, you better wake up. All those rank and file that they are sending, ECOWAS is not going to be your problem. Going to Niger is not going to be your problem because you need to come down and then put the fire that this man is about to set off in Nigeria. You need to wake up and come and douse it because that is your constitutional right. That is your constitutional duty to protect the lives and property of Nigerians. But you've not done it over these years. Rise up now. Rise up and show yourselves. And for those that are the rank and file, if it is your organ that is not allowing you, be a Gideon Orca. Be a Gideon Orca. He was not amongst the big, big one. Just be a Gideon Orca and show your strength. Look at how the other uh, uh, citizen journalists from, from, from the Western world are hailing Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso, and the rest. They are saying these are the ones that will liberate Africa. These are citizen or you both citizen journalists or you both journalists that are free of, of, of influences that understand what is going on. So the giant of Africa is what? What are we doing? That title needs to need to be need to be given back to where to who, who it deserves because we do not deserve that title. Talking about FFK. You see, when I was when you were reading it initially, I was thinking, is this man for real? Because the reverse is just too sharp, too sharp. When you are going straight and you make a quick detour, there is no way you will not do accident. Man, this man, the lack of lack of integrity, the 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 the, the, the man. I don't know. You know, when, when it's like he's crazy. It's not normal. And I don't want to believe that a man of his level, a man of his academic achievements would stoop so low in the way he has conducted himself. So I'm going to give him this get out clause to say it is a media stunt, is a PR stunt. A stunt trying to get us on the side of Tinubu in the reverse. Because in his write-up, while he's trying to say all the sh shenanigans, he was still in that same write-up, he's saying that this... Okay, try to round up in two minutes, mother. Thank you. Okay. He was trying to say that this drug dealer won the election. How can he say that? in the same breath, in that same write-up. And that is why I feel that write-up is a sham. Because him and the other and the other toothless, toothless dog that is also ranting on the other side, that Garba guy that is also talking against the war, but then they come down and say that he is the man with putting the blame on Echoas. They are trying to put take away the blame from this rat and put it on ECOWAS, that ECOWAS is the one sending Nigeria to war. What rubbish. What nonsense. Anyway, I yield. Thank you. Thank you, so much for the Thank you very much, madam. God bless you, madam. Busy brace. Thank you very much. Hello, good evening to you, sir. Thanks for calling in. Please talk to us. You have two minutes. Uh, good evening, Mr. Niger Watch. Uh, God bless you and the entire panel. Uh, my Thank pleasure you. again, you know, coming this evening. Now, I just want to touch on two things. One is this uh, uh, issue of the good thing they are just mentioning now. I knew it was forthcoming because they know that Tinubu has no choice, it's going away. 
And if they not, if not for what is happening in, in uh, Niger, if they not knows that Tinubu is going away and they don't want an evil man there, the next thing they will do is to make sure a coup is organized so that one of their own will come in again and that interregnum will bring in a new person either from the north or from among their cronies. Now that is about that. Uh, uh, Mr. Najawot, if you remember, the earlier days when I came in to, the, to this your group the first time, I said something about what the United Nations was saying to Nigerians sometime last year, that there is a red alert of, you know, uh, what do you call them, uh, uh, terrorists coming to invade Nigeria and that uh, Nigerians so that they are saying that Nigeria should leave the country. So this is the terrorist that we are talking about now. You see the plan they had with Bolatino. We look at all that time he was going to France every now and then, taking treatment at the same time, using the time to talk to Macron. Now, while he was doing that, America and uh, France and the uh, UK, uh, UK had been also in conversation over this issue, let me tell you the truth. They are not coming for Niger, my brother. They are coming for Nigeria. The soul of Nigeria, they've been looking for how to balkanize it again. But they've not found the way. Now, the opportunity has come for them. Through Niger, now they want to come in. And then you see Russia there. You see Russia there. The Wagner Group is another threat to them. All right. Thank you, so, sir. One should, one should please just give me a moment, if you don't mind. One should praise those soldiers in those countries, those young men. They know what they are doing. And if anybody don't, you know, support them now to encourage them, this thing is coming into Nigeria. But congratulations in advance, my brother, because I know it is time for people to, to get ready to come and take over that seat. God bless all of you. Thank you, sir. And good luck to everyone. God bless you, too, Have sir. a very nice evening. And you, too, sir. Uh, goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you very much. Callers, we are done for tonight. Um, and while I'm going to focus right now on the panelists, we're going to have our final submission right now so we can round up. Now, our final submission is going to be on five, five minutes. Then I'm done. Let me go to the talk again. Um, I would like to go with Mr. Ike first before I'll come to you, Mr. Phillips, if you are there. Mr. Ike, thank you very much for your patience. I'd like you to give us your final submission of today, five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Elvis. Thank you very much. And thank you for all other panelists that have spoken. Thank you, um, sir. It's really a tough one. You see the way, you see this article you just you just read about the denial of any plan or the pressure on DHQ to take over from the government. That's how it comes. They will first of all deny. But in denial, they have told us what is going on at the background. They've told us already that there is a pressure. When it happens now, they'll say, oh, they actually said the pressure was there. But of course, you don't expect them to come and tell you that they are going to uh, you know, carry out that, those pressures. But they are real. They are real. There is no smoke without fire. When you see people in government position denying something, that means they have gone about more than 50% in the plan of that. But they will say this thing to distract everybody, to distract the attention that people have over that. The country is not going any further. And when once you allow anarchy to rule a land, then you know that many forces will come from everywhere. You're not even talking about non-state actors, the terrorists, the bandits. They're having a field day because when you have the army that should concentrate or law enforcement agency that should concentrate 
on defending the country, when they are so distracted by so many things, these guys will have a leeway. The killings that are going on in Plateau these days are alarming. You can have more than 300 of your citizens killed in less than three months. It's not done anywhere. Even people that are actively fighting a war don't lose such number of people. You have people, villages, bandits will come into villages and kill as much as 27, 28 people. And then you have our military come two hours after they have all, all left. And they probably operated for more than two hours. Tell me, tell me any part of the country that you have two hours of such action and we don't have any military or police anywhere around. Or is it a calculated attempt to make everywhere go, go up on fire so that their incursion will be justified? It, it, there's no way, there's no way a government can run like this. There's no way. And when Nigeria goes up in flame, the whole of West Africa will be destabilized. But how are we taking the leadership position? Are we really taking the leadership position as the giant of Africa? Look at the way small countries are talking to us. Look at how we have made ourselves a radical to the whole West Africa and African sub-region. We we'll allow ourselves to be used for dirty games. These are called them dirty games. They are not, we, we, we're not supposed to distract ourselves in doing this. I just checked the exchange rate. Exchange rate to a dollar is about 930, 940. How can anybody work like this? And, and people that want to lord it over us to be our leaders, you don't force yourself. Peter B will always say, you don't go into the house from the window and start cleaning it. You can't. You can't go into a house from the window and you say you are cleaning it. The earlier we do something, oh my goodness. All right, I think we lost you there. We are not hearing you anymore. Okay, Mr. Ike, thank you very much anyway. Uh, your time is also done, but I don't know what happened. Okay, let me call on the next person. But I'm, I'm trying to even mute you in case you want to speak again. Okay, I'll put on the backstage for now. Okay, uh, Mr. Felix, are you still there with us? Mr. Felix is not available anymore. That's fine. Okay, let me come to Peace Soft. Thank you very much, sir. Please give us your final five minutes. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you, panelists and the viewers and listeners. Yeah, let me just touch on this article you put on right here. Uh, just like what the last uh, speaker said, so it has always been like that. In every coup around the whole world, there will always be a kind of a denial by the military. They just try to assess the public's uh, uh, opinion. They just want to know what the public feel. You know, they, they, that's what the military does. They just want to know with this uh, kind of uh, opinion. You know, a denial. They just want to know how the public will react if, just in case uh, anything. Of such help. of course, the generals will not be will not be involved because uh, they are part of the system. So there are those that will actually carry it out, you know, if if it is going to happen anyway. But my attention is going to be drawn to uh, that of the judiciary. Uh, the judiciary they just need to you know uh, give their judgment very quickly because uh, even me too, I'm losing our patient. You know, a lot of people are losing our patient. Because it's no longer funny. Of course, even the military too, they are losing our patient. You know, you can't keep uh, a judgment for so long when 
the concern is written in English. It's not written in, uh, in Chinese language. You know, uh, it, it's, it's unfortunate that uh, the, the, the judges are wasting so much time. You know, I don't know what they're reading. Uh, they, 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 they are behaving like people who never went to school, never studied English. But I can of understand uh, why they should be waiting so long. In other countries, they, it doesn't take that long, you know. You already reviewed the case. You know that this guy doesn't have a certificate. It's, it's not a rocket science to know. If the judge says that Ibu Tinubu went to school, he had this, then let the judge produce the certificate and let them tell us the school he went to. These things are in a public domain. You can't hide it. And let's check the name uh, and the gender of that certificate in, in that race school, in the school they claim that he went to. What's the gender of that uh, uh, that is in that certificate? How can a, a, how can, uh, a female suddenly, suddenly become uh, a male child? You know, I mean, this is very, very annoying, you know, you know, with people like us who have you know, got access to so much information is just just is just annoying. You know, it's just annoying. They shouldn't take us for granted. A lot of people have access to information. OK, so they should pass the judgment and remove that man from office because he's brought disgrace to, 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 to the Nigerian people. Uh, for making for first and foremost to able to say that he was going to fight a war in Niger, that's bullshit. You don't do that. You want to fight a war in Niger, your neighboring country. We've said this a lot. We said it over and over again. You don't fight a war with your neighboring country. It's dangerous, number one, because you are opening your country for an attack. It's all bullshit. You don't do that. It's enough for the military to take over with those statements because you should know. Wait, means he has opened up the room for the Nigerian state to be attacked. So there's a big security threat to the Nigerian state right now. So I believe that the military, they already assessed all of this information. They know that for you to say you want to attack your neighboring countries, it's an attack. You are opening a room, a door for the country to be attacked. So if, they, if, tomorrow, if by tomorrow we have a breaking news, we shouldn't be surprised. I mean, I'm going to join the after all. The country is going to benefit from uh, all prices are going to be regulated. Uh, our people are going to enjoy under the military, which is very, very key. We know that people are going to enjoy. Yes, of course, we do not want military rule for a very long time. But if they come in to stabilize uh, the economy, to try to revive the economy back, the, econ the Nigerian economy, economy is fucked. It's bullshit. So we, all right. that might be the miracle that we're all waiting for. No problem. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. Uh, really Thank you, Peace Soft. It's yeah. good to have you on the panel today, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, let me move on to the next person. Um, Madam Ame, I called you for the second time. Are you available to speak now? Okay. You are not there. Um, so I assume you're not there. So let me just move on to um, Madam Rita. Madam Rita, please give us your final submission. Five minutes, ma'am. Mr. Abit, is the next person should speak. Uh, my hands are kind of tied now. Thank you. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Madam Busy Brains, give us your final submission. Five minutes. Thank you. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll just thank you once more for the opportunity and my apologies also again for my absence earlier. No, 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 it doesn't um, matter. Thank you. Um, the gentleman that was talking about the what's happening in Plateau State, this is, to be honest with you, I don't even like talking about it because it gives me anxiety and palpitation because um, the last attack was somewhere even getting closer towards the, is, is he's heading towards Jaws. You know, which is not in high pan, which is not so far. Well, with the bad roads and everything, 40, 51 hour to Jaws, you know. And with all this insurgency that is pilfering, destroying Nigeria from within, that is in itself war, war on your people. In fact, I was reading stats in Kaduna this in the space of how many months? Over a thousand and something people died. By, and they say we are not at war and people are, are buying like that. In Plato said, how many? 
have died. People are buying like that. And we are supposed to have a leader. And we are supposed to have military in that place. And their function is to secure lives and property. And nothing, nothing. We are left at the mercy of these diabolical human beings. There has to be something that God is doing. There has to be a plan that he's concocting that we are just waiting to see it unravel. Because it is, I cannot, it is not normal. Normal. It's not normal. We are being ruled by the worst of us. By the worst of us. That is who are telling us to go sit down, to go jump, to go drink, to go eat. Can you imagine? Somebody came to me today and was telling me about her relation back in Lagos that she cannot even drive to her business. She can't attend her business. A friend of hers is getting a uh, 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 having uh, th getting married, they cannot even go because, and it's just the other side of Lagos. They can't even go because no, no, no means of how to get there. Look at the regret, re retro. What what language am I even supposed to even use for these people? That I don't. I'm telling you, even the devil is bowing and saying, man. Even me, I cannot do those. Half of what you people are doing. They have no fear at all, at all. That is why the only, the, the last hope, they say the judiciary at the end of the day, it is God. That is our last hope. Because the judiciary can go either way. The lady that called earlier, I was talking about a reliable information. I, I, I am... It's 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 a, it's it's at least a relief that they could not turn a blind eye to all the evidence that is there. If that is go, if if that information that was shared with us is true, however, that they are even sitting down to negotiate. Who is sitting down to negotiate? That is where this fashion now comes in. Fashola, it will not be well with you and everything that you hold there. Fashola, it will not be well with you and everything that you hold there. And there is so much truth in that because he has gone and instigated for them to go and uh, 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 DSS, the, 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 the silly DSS that do not know their job that have become the, 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 the tools to be used in the hands of these new poops. They've gone and carried the brother of the person that broke the news. You know, the reportera platform, the news uh, platform. They went and carried the brother, you know, locked the brother up in order to get to him. If there is no truth, why can they go through the court of law? It's not that I say we should go to court. Why did he not go to court? He's talking about a, a what is what is the word? What is that word when they talk about you, uh, uh, your character? What do they? What what is the word? Um, is it no, not blasphemy? Um, anyway, defamation, defamation. Defamation. Thank you so much for bailing me out. Defamation of character. What character do they have? They have no character. We are seeing them naked. It's because of the seat that they are sitting on. They hold the, the means to destroy and to, to buy. That is why people are calming down. Let them move away from that seat. Let us see somebody like El Rufai now and let him not let him see if he does not collect Woto Woto. Nonsense, people. Nonsense. Honestly, when this is when this is all over. Me, the guillot time, that is where they, they, they should all be hanged. They should all be hanged. The harshest punishment should be given Sir, to them. The BB, the, the BB, I don't think you should say that word. Please. Okay. Isn't the H word? Please. Thank you. I rest my case, okay, Elvis. Thank you very much. All right, um, Madam President Breeze, I guess you're you're done now. Yes, please let's be conscious of uh, the kind of words we use here. Is we are not here to incite any kind of violence. I've said that before. You know, um, people are listening. You know, is is this platform doesn't stand for that, and apart from that, YouTube doesn't stand for it as well. 
you know um i understand that so many of us are very very you know in pains right now over not just right now since god knows when you know how these people have been treating us but we still need to be careful the words we use against them somebody has gave a submission earlier and was using the k word continuously you know sometimes yes um the reason why I don't really like interjecting people all the time, especially people that I know that is already coming to this platform, you know the rules, let's just follow it. Thank you, everybody. All right, um, Madam Rita, I guess you are right now, you are ready now, right? Yeah. To give us yeah. another five minutes. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Elvis. Um, uh, what I could just say right now, if the military is saying this, making these claims, uh, they should hold it, they should shield their swords because right now we are looking at the judiciary. The judiciary should do the right thing. You know, in fact, if saying doing the right thing, it's not it has not become like a mantra that is almost meaningless or almost unright to say. Because if you have a judiciary system that does their job without being influenced in any way, they, they should do what, what the law says, you know, without us telling them to do the right thing. So that's why I think doing the right thing has almost become like a, 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 a mantra that is bad, sort of. I, I don't know. I mean, that, that's how I feel because you're supposed to do the right thing. You're supposed to go by the evidences that have been laid down, you know, before them. And the reason why I know we say this is because of the kind of society we come from where people, you know, I'm, I mean, we've, we've seen it. Someone like, um, what was his name? The former senate president that all of a sudden became a senate and nobody can actually understand how he became a senate lawan you know we are talking about uh, hopeless uh who's or didn't join emo state supreme court uh, governor so you know it, things like this are, you know that makes you know our society or, or, or us say things like judiciary do the right thing because the judiciary has not been standing for justice for so many years just like bukachua for example influencing his wife to make decisions and destroying other people's lives so that is why you know this mantra of judicial do the right thing has become monotonous it has become something that maybe is just like a saying for the sake of saying but really they should do the right thing because in the past they have not done the right thing a lot of governors we see today you know they they they, they pay the judges allegedly the senior advocate of nonsense they, they change judgments, the one that didn't go to school, that has certificate issue, you know, everything is upturned, you know, and then we have professors from university, vice chancellors of university, you know, doing behaving in a topsy-turvy way, not going in a one, in one direction. So that's what gives rise to all this kind of mantra, do the right thing, you know, respect yourself, you know, um, you know, look at the future, any decision you make, you, you, you make today can affect a lot of generations, stuff like that. But if we are a society that have conscience, People ought to just do things the way they ought to do it without us having a mantra like do the right thing or judiciary, the, we, or, or, all eyes on judiciary, you know. But we have to say it because of the kind of country we come from. So, um, we got uh, talking about the Niger, you know, war and all that. For me, I'm just waiting to hear what my president would say. I know maybe he might not want to co um, comment on what he would do if he was president. I mean, if, if when he is sworn in, I'm talking about Peter the Rock Obi, you know, but um, I think I would advise that you know, anybody that is close to Peter Obi, please let him not make any comments or suggestion. We, you know, when he's sworn in, what he will, I mean, how it would influence the ECOWAS or how it influence, you know, the relationship with Niger and this conflict. Please, he should not come out and make one single comment because anything he says right now will be used against him. Anything he says right now they would copy it. And when they copy it, they will always fail. So please let him just hush his mouth. With all due respect, sir, don't make any comment. Let them fool yourself. Everything is working in Nigerian's direction or the obedience direction because God has planted these things to happen. So we will see how inept, corrupt, uh, uh, um, this, this, this kind of person called the, the one in the apparition in Astral Rock that's from Guinea what the kind of leadership that he claims he have is everything is being exposed that they are clueless they have nothing to show no sense of leadership no sense of belonging no sense of country no sense of love everything is all based on drug baron gestapo like governance administration 
So there's really nothing to offer. I see Dele Alake and uh, Femi Bajabi and Mia, uh, Mia La, you know, in that echo was conference. They, they look clueless. They even look too worried. They even look like they don't who belong there. If you look at their containers, look at their faces. They look clueless. Like you could see the fear in their face. Like, oh my God, what's this man going to say? Oh my God, what can we do? We seem to have run out of ideas. So it is happening and everyone is seeing the result. Both the Emmy locals and the travel bigots and the likes of the midget of Kaduna, they're all seeing it now. And the caliphates that feel that they have influenced and, 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 and leadership of Nigeria one way or the other just because so uh, you to support the North. But you are seeing the result now. And God works in mysterious ways. Now you guys are faced with your cousins, your relatives, your wives and your children in Niger, you know, you're not faced with this kind of conflicts, you know. So they are finding a way to deal with it now. And I'm happy that we in the South South, you know, our traditional rulers and the ones we respect, everybody is watching. But everyone should shield their sword. But everyone should just focus on what the judiciary has to say, as well as also watching our borders. Because don't feel that because you are in any go or because you are in worry, what is happening in Niger is not going to it's going to affect everyone. I mean, I talked about the 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 flight. I think somebody mentioned it. The the price of ticket right now and the distance of flying out of Nigeria right now, in and out of Nigeria, is gonna be longer. So they are gonna use more fuel for the planes just because they need to redirect their route. So you're gonna pay more money for that and spend more hours in the plane in the air. So, so it's affecting us one way or the other. Even people who are doing businesses right now, those people who are in Nigeria who, who import things from China, they're going to pay more money. And what does that transcend? In the market, in the market, every good is going to be expensive, excluding what you are dealing with with the um, four price increase. You know, so it's a ripple effect in every strata of life in Nigeria right now. You know, so it, everything is affecting everybody. So we need to talk about it and we need to keep spreading that prayer. We need to keep telling, especially the likes of Akpabu, that we know what they are doing and the judiciary must do what they ought to do. And we are waiting for the day we are going to, they are going to swear in the real, true president that God has given, has gifted Nigeria. Because Peter Jerokobi is a gift to my generation. And that gift, uh, we, we need to un un unwrap that gift because we need to see what that gift needs to do to change Nigeria to the right direction. So, Mr. Nigeria, well, thank you so much for what you do. You know, I mean, I just, I don't know how to thank you, but I just have to keep saying thank you, thank you, thank you. You are the lion of social justice. I appreciate you and I appreciate everyone that's here and everyone in the comment session who is, who is dedicated like Mommy Diaspora coming every day, everybody with different time zones. But you come here because it's a call to service. It's a call to, to, to serve your nation, to educate those people who are gullible, to support and to help. Please share this video and like this video. It is very important you share it for people to understand what is really happening. Thank you once again and God bless everyone. Thank you, Mother Rita. Thank you. We appreciate you too. Thanks for your encouragement always. God bless you. All right, Mother Patricia, uh, please give us your final submission. Five minutes. If you're available. Yeah, thank you again, Mr. Elvis. Um, yes, I am available. Thank you. What would I want to say? Nigeria is, um, yeah. Thank God, you know, we just need to keep uh, keep our hopes alive. Judiciary, whether they like it or not, OB is coming. So the military people, we should, yeah, show their uh, you know, hold back for now, and then. Um, Let's see what's going to happen. Um, the what's so called Tunubu should get ready. If he's going to war, he should first, he uh, should uh, step down and then uh, take his children and all his uh, supporters with him. I'm sorry, he has an army already now. Then he can carry a sari to Kumbo and go. You know, he can step down. They can, as soon as he said he wants to use himself, he wants to be a puppet for the friend France to use. Yeah, we are not saying no for them to use him, but they cannot use him under under the name of the Nigerian. 
you can go under the name of uh, ECOWAS because after this, we are pulling out of that ECOWAS since they don't have any sense in that union. They don't. They are supposed to be economic, uh, an economic union. How can uh, suddenly from economic, uh, being an economic uh, union where you deliberate on how to promote uh, economic uh, 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 stability in your, in, your, in your region? How can that trans translate to going to war? Does that make any sense? Since they said they are skewless, they are senseless. So they will give, the Tunubu can go and uh, join them because Nigeria can withdraw from that echo once. We don't need it. We don't need people like this. We don't need them. So Tunubu can take aside the Google and all his uh, army, like he said he has, and all his uh, supporters and let them go. Go to that, uh, go and be used. As, uh, Thank you. Um, so our side, South, South, um, Yes, we, now is the time for we to really mark guard over our borders because Thank we you. can't fold our hands and be looking. You know, don't think that they are going, this thing they are looking can be that it's a trap. So let's stay alert, open your eyes, shine your eyes, train people so that we can be fit for, ready for battle at any time wash over our borders. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Madam Patricia. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much. I appreciate every one of you. We have come to the end of this broadcast. It's been a long day, uh, six hours again, as usual. Thank you very much, my people. I appreciate you all. Everyone of you that came to the panel today, people that are still here with us, uh, Mr. Felix, Madam Busy Brains, Peace Soft, Madam Patricia, Thank you very much. I appreciate you all, Madam Rita. Thank you very much for coming in earlier on. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, many more people that came in today. I might not be, <laughs> be able to mention this. Uh, Mr. Alex and many others. You know, Prince Akwashi was with us as well. Uh, others and others. Okay, meanwhile, uh, let's move on. Thank you very much. I appreciate you all. Uh, those of you that supported us today financially, Amaka Fujibi, Madam Bella Naomi, Gift I want for love of God is my strength and King's Leogaria in a go go bless you now. Thank you very much, my people. I appreciate every one of you. My pocket never run dry. I appreciate you all. Those of you that like and share, may God bless you all. Those of you that called into the show today, thank you very much. And those of you I could not pick your calls, understand with us tomorrow by God's grace, we'll still pick your call. Uh, we are not deliberately choosing the calls to pick, and we are not deliberately choosing the people to come to the panel. As long as you follow the rules, you can join our panel. If you are part of the satanic people, we'll have a way to scrutinize you. Thank you very much, my people. I appreciate you all. Uh, I can see, oh, I have a late night, good night super chats from Madam Bella Naomi. Yes, I like this. Thank you very much, Madam Bella Naomi. May God bless you. People can never run dry. Yeah, this one had a call, good night super chats. Thank you. Thank you. I'll use this one to buy for a better password. <laughs> and God bless you. I really appreciate all the love you guys are showing me. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Yes, mother of all, mommy diaspora. Thank you very much, mommy. We appreciate you. Thank you very much for your consistency, you know, for all you're doing. Annabella Naomi, thank you very much. I appreciate you. I can say Chris Dublin. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, my wonderful people. Peggy Modi, I can see right there. Thank you very much. Posha Gina, thank you. Pius Moye, thank you. Uh, Origin, thank you very much, madam. Engineer Francis, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Uh, Black Child Awoken, thank you. BK, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my good people. Kingsley O'Geria, he, thank you very much once again. I got a blessing on top notch. I can see you as well. Vatos, thank you. And many others. Thank you, thank you, my people. We have Prince Mass Clinic. Prince Mass Clinic, it's good to see you. I don't know whether you did with us since, but it's good to see you right now. God bless you too. Thank you very much. Happy girl, Idemudia. Thank you very much. Good night. God bless you all. Thank you, thank you, my people. Permit me to leave right now uh, to draw the curtain so that we can have enough energy <laughs> to come back again by God's grace. 6 p.m. Later on, 
you know, I can't wait for us to move out of all this. I'm start checkmating our president, Mr. Peter Obi. Yes, I promise you all, I use this platform to work for Mr. Peter Obi. I will use the same platform to checkmate him. So maybe then you guys will, that my new followers, you get to know that we are not biased here. We're not supporting Peter Obi because we love him. We are supporting him because we know he's the right person that can do the job. Thank you. Shikelo Anthony, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. And God will bless you. God bless you, all my people right there. God bless Stella in my seven though. I can see you. Thank you very much, madam. I appreciate you all. And God will bless every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. BTV Ninja. Thank you very much, my people. Please press on the like button before you leave. And please a post to copy the link. Take with you as you are leaving. Just copy the link. Go put that for any platform you belong. Pe keep it there. Um, yes, there will be one or two person that will discover us and come here to listen to what we're saying. You know, as you all know, what we're doing here, we're fighting for a new Nigeria, a better Nigeria, because we know that we cannot continue like this. Thank you very much, my people. I'm not a perfect person. If I've offended anybody, forgive me. I will always beg for this every day. I'm not a perfect person. I've never portrayed myself to be one. Let's manage ourselves. The ability to stay with human beings is to manage them. Take care and good night, my people. It's where I learned to be, you know, I must say.